Tony, you want to uh, have some trigger control and weigh in on that? You know, I just figured it's sitting next to me and got his gun we're, out. we're at a range and I can do it. So why not pull it out? I Here's you're thing. not supposed to put your finger. Yeah, don't put your finger on the trigger. <laughs> Safety's on, guys. Safety's on. No clipping. Safety's on. Is well, this is, is so many people's last words. All right, I'm going to put it away. I'm going <laughs> to put it should, away. No, but we should say that, that that is a kind of gun that actually does have a safety. Most nine millimeters don't have safeties. How many people That's a were their last words? Safety's on. Oh, God. Right. It's be over Thousands. 100, right? Thousands. Right. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank Podcast. My name is Ari Shafir. Say it slowly. Skeptic Tank Podcast. Although you probably already know that if you're watching or listening to it. You gotta already know it. So this one takes place in Austin, Texas. I was there um, uh, enjoying. Uh, we did a podcast with our buddies Shan, Marge, and Joy. And the next day, I hung out with my friend Tony Hinchcliffe. Tony Hinchcliffe has a popular live show called Kill Tony. You're about... Check him out on YouTube. You're about to get that Skeptic Tank bump, Tony. Uh, of downloads that were only in the hundreds and now be in the hundreds of thousands because of what? Because of that skeptic tank bump. Um, and so we we're going to hang out and walk around, do a little walk, and maybe uh, do a podcast. And then our other buddy, Joe Rogan, called and said, hey, you're still in town? Why don't you come to breakfast with me and Tony? I'm like, oh, me and Tony, we're already going to go for a walk. He goes, let's go to breakfast. He's like, all right, sure. 1130, uh, what do you want? Let's get an omelet somewhere. And he goes, no, barbecue. Joe Rogan is um, part man, part wildebeest. So he doesn't eat anything except meat and apples right now. It's legitimately what his diet is, meat and apples. That's not a joke. That's legitimately what his diet is right now, meat and apples. What kind of diet is that? I don't know. Um, anyway, so he called and he's like, have a barbecue. I'm like, it's 1130, man. I'll meet you for an omelet though. And he goes, barbecue, barbecue, barbecue. And, and me and Tony were like, how about chicken? How about meet us in the middle? We just had a bunch of fucking meat the night before. And his response was, barbecue, barbecue, barbecue. And here's how it works. When somebody's paying for it, you fucking, it's up to them. Also, Joe is a strong-willed person. So the barbecue went out, and we had fucking $187 worth of barbecue at 1130 in the morning. 1130 in the morning uh, is comedians, uh, 645. So uh, we filled up on Terry Black's barbecue. Um, it was delicious. Mm, I ate massive amounts. Joe Rogan did not bring any apples. So all he was able to eat was the barbecue. And then afterwards, like, let's do a podcast. So we went to a local gun range. <laughs> Dude, fucking Texas is wild. That's all these motherfuckers do. They go shooting at gun ranges, do fucking shows. It's crazy, the scene out there right now. They, they, it, when you're done with the show, you're like, you, no, everywhere else. You're like, I'm done. In, in Texas, in Austin, that Rogan, Tony scene, they're just like, hey, we'll, we'll set a golf cart for you. And they just take a golf cart and drive you through the streets to whatever bar you want to go to. And then when you're done, they're like, we'll pick you up. We'll pick you up uh, on a golf cart on regular city streets. Just whizzing by homeless people. <laughs> they're like, what have you done well to live your life? I'm like, I don't know, man. I should be with you. If I caught heroin instead of weed, I'd be right where you are. But I'm not. I caught weed. And my buddy uh, started one of those popular podcasts of all times. And I'm a coat rider. That's right. And I rode that coat right onto that golf cart. It's nuts what they got going on out there. Um, so me and Tony and Joe, uh, sat in, uh, on a podcast from a gun range until we went straight from barbecue to <laughs> fucking a gun range. I did a podcast. You'll hear it. It was outside, but you can hear it for sure in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we did, we started doing, uh, cause I couldn't really think of a topic. So we started just doing the Patreon. Patreon does mailbag questions. Um, they just add in mailbag questions. Um, so we do like four different ones on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. Um, General mailback, sex and relationship advice, uh, travel uh, stories, and um, and uh, what was the last one? Uh, arrest stories and stuff like that. So people just write in, and then I'll just, I'll just riff off it with a guest, and this is by myself. It's fun. Get on there. Five bucks a month or more. Um, so anyway, we did that. We just hung out. Rogan had to leave. 
Um, but the rest of us, me and Tony hung out, and it got fucking great. Told old stories about the conversation. Well, you'll see it right now. You'll see it right now. I'm glad I got out of Texas, too, because the Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys, just showed themselves to be a fucking tarred team. They fucking suck, dude. Dak, Dak Prescott is mediocre. He's a mediocre comic. All his stats go up in the fucking fourth quarter. Tell me I'm wrong. All right, let's do some dates real quick, and let's start the episode. Why even Why even delay this? Uh, February 8th, we're doing a storyteller show at the Gramercy, New York City. New York City, February 8th, the Gramercy Theater. Tickets are on sale now at arishafir.com. February 8th, I'm not going to tell you the lineup. I'm going to tell you it's already fucking great. Surprise lineups. One show only, February 8th. Get tickets right now at arishafir.com. March 6th in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, we're adding a 3.30 p.m. show. Me, Norman, Renazisi, O'Neill. Uh, this is the third show. There won't be any more. So hurry up. Get those tickets. Um, there was the, those are the other. Oh, the last big show is me, Robert Kelly, and uh, and Big J Okerson uh, in Michigan, um, where we went. Dude, I was in Cleveland. I got snowed in. So it, was, it started snowing heavy, and Sal and Gary Veter were there. I was there with Adrian. And they're like, dude, we're, our flights are not going to get out tomorrow. So we're like, well, what are we going to do? I had to get home. I had to upload this podcast, you know, do some more yoga with Ari's. Um, on YouTube now, and uh, and he goes, Vitor had the idea. Let's drive to Detroit. So he rented a car, drove, to, got high, uh, just drove to Detroit, <laughs> and took a fucking plane from Detroit. I'm lucky we did because our flights in Cleveland snowed for 14 straight hours. Our flights in Cleveland, uh, Sal's was delayed 45 minutes, and me and Adrian's flight delayed for four minutes. Thank God we drove the three and a half hours in the snow to Detroit. To avoid that debacle. So anyway, in Detroit is where I'll be with Big J Okerson and Bobby Kelly on March 26th. March 25th at Grand Rapids. Tickets are available at arishavir.com. It's all three of us. March 25th, Grand Rapids. March 26th, Detroit. The boys, two Jews, two fats. Take Michigan. Um, And then I got Phoenix, uh, January 20th, this weekend, January 20th, 21st, 22nd. Tampa, February 11th and 12th. And... Um, and Denver, February 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. Those shows will be with Adrian Appalucci. Jamar Neighbors is coming with me to Phoenix. Steve Simone to Tampa. Um, surprise lineup for the Gramercy November, I mean, uh, February 8th. It's half sold out. Hurry up. And Denver is already like Saturday sold out. Hurry up is my point. Go to rashafir.com for tickets. Um, also, rashafir.com for tickets is uh, where you can find like the, the YouTube version of this show and uh, all the music choices and links for their socials and shit like that. Um, oh, fuck. And I forgot Vancouver. I forgot Vancouver, February 27th. I'm at the Vogue Theater in Vancouver, February 27th. And I'm doing a yoga, a live yoga on February 27th in Vancouver. Uh, it'll be at the JFL uh, Northwest or JFL Vancouver, whatever they call it, um, website when it happens. But I'm doing a live yoga Sunday day and then... My own show, um, Sunday night. So get tickets. AriShafir.com. Um, Got to go to Vancouver. Maybe I'll go to Whistler afterwards for a couple of days. Go skiing. Anyway, thank you very much. If anybody has any hookups for ski stuff in Park City, I equipment, hit me up on Instagram.com slash R-I-P AriShafir. Um, That's the end of the insert. <laughs> All right, let's just start the fucking episode. Ladies and gentlemen, today's episode of Ari Shavir's Skeptic Podcast is brought to you by Cancelled Comedians. Cancelled Comedians in both Los Angeles and New York are paving the way for young comics to get spots. Without Cancelled Comedians, there'd be no room for young comics to develop. So thank you, Cancelled Comedians, for moving out of the way and allowing young comics a spot to shine. This episode of Ari Shavir's Skeptic is again brought to you by the kind donations and rape accusations about canceled comedians. Um, let's start. Live from a gun range in Austin, Texas. I don't know what the name of it. Ari Shafir Skeptic, episode 455, the most Texas podcast of all time, straight from fucking barbecue to a gun range with Tony Hinchliff and Joe Rogan. Starts now. Well, we're off. Welcome to the most Texas podcast of all time. Yay. <laughs> we're at a gun range smoking cigars. After <laughs> eating barbecue. After eating Terry Black's barbecue. Oh, you should have seen those homeless guys' face light up. Oh, really? <laughs> when you gave them the... I gave them $135 worth of barbecue. <laughs> that was nice. I, mean, they were, I was like, 
hey, do you got the, like, uh, it's like the kind of zombies, you know? And, uh, like, you guys want some food? Like, what is it? I was like, it's like barbecue. They're like, wait, what? And they all started coming over. I'm like, this fork's in there. Split it up. They're like, oh. Oh, that's cool of you. That's very cool. You paid for it. Yeah. It's cool of you to give away something that somebody, <laughs> somebody else, else paid stuff. for. Yeah, it's still cool. <laughs> you, you put out an effort to go give it to those folks. Yeah. I think it's cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So here's how I do some of these, just so you know. We can talk shoot the shit all you want, but I do these um, uh, mailbag things. So here are the four possible topics. Just general. Um, how many iPhones do you own? Four. These are film. Yeah. People don't know. These are all being filmed with iPhones. That new one's Tony's. That's way more high tech than my normal good one. And then that's my normal okay one. Oh, you're using yours too, Tony? Mm, he's using mine. Yeah. Because yeah. I got to get on this. Nice. Yes. Nice. So that he could go through his mailbag. Yeah. So do you want to do a general mailbag, arrest stories, which is shooting the shit on people's like dumb whatever. Like one of them was like, I sold weed out of a Wendy's drive through and it's just like fucking around on it. Arrest stories, general mailbag, sex relationship shit, or uh, travel stories. I guess we start off with general mailbag. Yeah. And if it sucks. We can always switch. You work your way to We're sex. We're not bound by any of this. How long have you guys been shooting guns, by the way? Uh, me? Um, I bought my first gun in 94. Yeah. And I didn't really shoot much. I just kind of had it at the house. Um. Yeah. I really didn't start shooting seriously until I started hunting. And that was 2012. That was rifles a lot. Yeah. And then I really didn't start shooting guns until I guess three years ago ish. That's when you started going to that tactical Terran place. Terran tactical. Yeah. That looks like the most fun. You've done it. It's very fun. no, not yet. I'm I mean, excited yeah. to try. It looks bad. That's what you want, like moving targets. Yeah. Where it's not just like, and this is cool, but like yeah. some action. Yeah, you move. The targets don't move, but there are some targets that you can spin and knock them around, knock them down and stuff. Have you got, remember the police academy when they had to like shoot all the stuff and then like, uh, oh, you actually shoot the guy's guy. name was like killing all the good people too. Right. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, what was it? What was his name? Hightower? <laughs> Hightower, maybe. No, Hightower was the black dude. Yeah. That'd rip out the front seat so he could fit in, drive from the back seat. Oh, those movies are underrated. <laughs> maybe they're terrible. <laughs> yeah, but I want to get one of those. Like, boom, boom. Uh, one with the baby? Nope. And yeah. Like, they have them where they're simulations. There's a video one that you do that's really cool. You don't shoot a real gun, but it feels like a real gun. It weighs what a real gun weighs. That's a cannon somebody has downstairs. Yeah. yeah. That's through bu double bulletproof glasses and like soundproof. But that's downstairs too. Yeah. Damn. That one's downstairs. Yeah. That's the, they have a rifle range, a hundred yard rifle range down there. Damn. Sometimes we're in this thing and like, you know, there's a lot of loud bangs. You have the headphones on and everything. And then uh, it's so blatant. Someone brings out a fucking cannon. <laughs> Someone had a Mossberg shotgun last exactly. time. It's a heavy duty shotgun. Sometimes you'll be shooting a gun and a noise will happen so loud where like you jump and you're used to the sound of guns. So imagine yeah. how loud it has to be. It's quite loud. There's a real sound that a gun makes over. Like sometimes you're like, is that fireworks? And sometimes you're like, it for sure was not. Right. Especially in my neighborhood where yeah. you might hear both. Right. <laughs> you might hear like yeah, a couple you might, over. Right? Like, the only way to tell is when the Last cops. Last time I was in New York, we heard gunfire. Really? Yeah, we heard gunfire late at night. It was probably like three in the morning. We're getting shawarma. Oh. And uh, we heard bang, bang, bang. I was like, that is a fucking gun, kids. Um, here's a good question. If you're a fan of a comedian, this will be good for you guys. Maddie from Boston. Does it make sense to see them multiple times on the same tour? Like how different are the shows or the jokes show to show? Is there maybe a distance between shows where it might make sense to see a comedian again? We're kind of just talking about this a little bit. Yeah, so well, generally speaking, most comics have the same material mm -hmm. that they'll do if you see them over you know, the course of like a couple of weeks or a month or so. Yeah. Unless something happens in the news and they write some new shit or unless they're working out multiple sets at the same time. Most of the time you're you're honing. So we've gotten into this process as comics where every X amount of years, whether it's two or, you know, Louis C.K. in his prime was doing one. one. He's, he's still in his prime. Damn. He's still in his prime. Yeah, his new special is excellent. But when he was at the top of his popularity, he was doing one a year, which is kind of a little too much. 2014, 2015. It was crazy. Yeah. I think Carlin did that too, but I think every two years seems to me to be a good schedule for me. Although I feel 
more prepared now because I had like a whole year off from the pandemic. Yeah. So I might push it in the future to like two and a half years. But generally what speaking, kind of the point is like what we do is we get ready for a special, we piece together a set, and then we work on that material to hone it to a razor's edge. Uh, yeah, I would and say don't come back the same fucking weekend. Unless right. you're a real fan and want to see that shit again. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of those people at Vulcan. We have a lot of that. Okay, but this is what we were saying today. Sit in the back. We can see you up there. I saw you yesterday. <laughs> right. Any of the things, I'm like, this will surprise you. I yeah. know it's not going to surprise uh, you. I'm right. staring at you the whole time. You can sit up front once. Yeah. And then the back. Right. Agreed? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. New rule comedy. Yeah. Well, you know, there's not that many people that come more than once. But if you're a comedy enthusiast and you want to see, like, maybe this show will be different. Maybe, like, I remember seeing Hicks multiple times when he was in Boston. Yeah. And I saw some shows where he killed. And I saw one show where he bombed. And, I, you know, I saw different versions of the bits. Yeah. You get to see... You know, we all know like our pacing and timing is different on different days. You know, I heard a story about Brian Regan. Go ahead. No, go ahead. That somebody at the DC Improv was like, he was signing, you know, selling T-shirts or just greet, meet and greet after in between shows, first and second show. And they're like, hey, we're big fans of this couple. We're big fans. We saw you. We're actually going to go into the next show too because such big fans. He was like, oh, and he just did a different hour. Wow. <laughs> just on the fly like that. He was yeah. like, Sweet. that's crazy yeah. that he can do that. But, I told you the Jenny story, right? Richard Jenny. When, what was when it? we were kids. Well, I was like 21 or whatever. I was 23 or 24. And uh, he was headlining at the uh, East Side Comedy Club on Long Island. And the comics were like devastated because the, he was so much better than everybody. They all felt like they wanted to quit because <laughs> they were sitting in the lobby. And I remember this guy, Pete, who was the host, said he did a different hour, all four shows. Did a different hour because he was the host. So he did a different hour Friday a different headlining hour. Saturday, two shows. Friday, two shows. Saturday, two different Everyone? shows. Friday, two completely different Why? shows. Because he's got that much material. But yeah, he's an animal. Yeah. But Richard Jenny, when he was alive, was so fucking good. He was so good. Yeah. One of the also, one of the cleanest suicides. No. He cut himself in the tub. No, he shot himself. Oh really? He in shot himself, but he didn't kill himself. He's still alive, and then Ooh. they had to take him to the hospital. What? Yeah, no. yeah, 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 yeah. He died in the hospital. He shoot himself in the head, or yes, this? yes, Jesus, yes. What a terrible shot. Yeah, and we're at the range. Yeah, someone yep. should taught him better. Should have used. used you gotta that. know where to shoot. What were you gonna say, Tony? I can't remember. Damn but it. that's 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 crazy. Was he in the tub? Is that part right? He was in the tub. I, I believe he's in the tub. And he canceled all his gigs. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Canceled out. oh, which is crazy. Wow. Oh. Yeah, when a comic cancels all their gigs, you might want to check in on them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not a great sign. Not a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Who would you rather fuck? Your high school crush then or your celebrity crush now? Well, that's Easy easy. Pleasure. What? It's celebrity crush now. Who is it? Yanana John I don't even have I'm not sure who the number one is, but I would definitely do that. Well high school you'd have to be a pedophile, you fucking sick. No, prick. you go back to then. You get to fuck her with your sixteen year old yeah, body. But your sixteen year old oh, body. Going with your, back to then, I think you fucking meant... grown ass man brain. That's creepy. Yeah, you imagine that's if you had a sixteen year old body and a grown ass man brain, I yeah. think you're still a pedophile. They said this is the problem with uh, Twilight. They're like that's not a 16 year old in high school. He's you. a thousand. That's a 300 year old man. Yeah. <laughs> You're a exactly. moron. You can't he's possibly challenge him. He's banging a kid. <laughs> he's he's like, banging a kid yeah. and he's a fucking <laughs> old, old, old ass man. <laughs> they take that out of the equation. Of course he's going to score. Bro, that whole thing. The best seven in the, that whole in the thing city. of girls and vampires is so weird. It's so weird. I love it. It's like, it's like he'll horses. kill everybody else, but he won't kill me. Mm -hmm. That's how why girls like hook up with serial killers. It's kind of the same thing. There's like some weird attraction they have to evil, the killers. Because it's like, but they're like stylish evil. Mm. The cape. Yeah, the cape. I don't think this wild guy's had a cape. He went to high school. A fucking loser. Imagine, <laughs> remember that? He had to pretend he was in high school. Why? Like, come so on. So the town wouldn't be bothered by yeah. him. Yeah. You could just say like, no, I look young. I can't yeah. get into it. I never watched The Twilight. I can't even start it. I'm loyal to the soil. Bram Stroker, Gary Oldman. That's my fucking vampire. Loyal to the soil? Is that yeah. what you just said? Yep. Did you see that, hear that in a rap video or something? Yeah. Is that like a Freddie yeah. Gibbs line? Yeah, I'm trying to be cool, <laughs> Joe. Don't ruin it for me, dude. <laughs> Loyal, Loyal to the to soil. The soil. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big Gary Oldman fan, too. He was the best Oh, Dracula. my God. I that went down so a good. rabbit so hole the characters. other day. Dude, I went down a... You have to do this. What? 
Gary, there's a, fuck, there's a, hey, I wish I knew the exact title to it. There's a YouTube video, Gary, the best of Gary Oldman or whatever, where yeah. it's like 17 minutes long and every 20 seconds it shows you him as a different famous movie role, the guy on the couch well, in True Romance, different. the guy, oh True my God. True Romance was the most out there. Well, like, it's what? not. Yeah. When you watch this video, you realize Gary True Romance. Romance is like his 20th or 30th best ever. It's crazy. He's all these different he's things. So he's good. Winston Churchill. He's fucking yeah. this guy. He's that guy. And every single one of them, he almost never looks like Gary Oldman. I mean, this is a guy that fucking morphs into a character completely. He's not worried about him looking like himself to get the fame. He. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a real artist. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the few. I shit on actors, but there's a few that are like, no, no, you're good at what you do. Mm -hmm. The true romance one. I was like, I've told people like, do you like Gary Oldman in that? Like. What? Right. He wasn't in that. Yeah, they have no idea. Just this, yeah. just this like white what? dreadlock piece yeah. of shit. Yep. Drug dealer. Drug dealer. One eye. Good one too. Great. Glass eye. Yeah, one that. eye. Fucked up eye. Eating Chinese food. Yeah. yeah. Want to hear a Chappelle story? Sure. This is interesting. Um, listening to the intro of episode 437 with Eleanor. I have a Dave Chappelle Africa story. In 2008, st interrupt me anytime. 2008, I did a study abroad program called Semester at Sea. I was eating dinner in a restaurant along the port in Cape Town, and no joke, saw Dave Chappelle walking the waterfront of Cape Town, South Africa, smoking a cigarette. Story checks out so far. I let my boyfriend at the time stay at the restaurant to pay for dinner and ran down to say hello. Probably kind of rude of me now in retrospect, but I was 20, so sorry. By the time I got down there, a small group had begun to form. He was walking near where a ship was hosting 350 American kids was docked. Talked to a group of 10 of us for about 10 minutes, declined any picture opportunities, and was super cool. He found it entertaining a bunch of white college kids were on a ship taking the reverse route of enslaved Africans. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going backwards. <laughs> uh. <laughs> He's not wrong. All in all, very cool experience. Smartphones weren't a thing, so got to keep the story to myself and share it every now and again. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, later that night, I proceeded to vomit up and diary up the dinner I had. Oh, that's <laughs> <Yeah>. sad. <laughs> Isn't that fun, though? Before yeah. cell phones and shit, you just have the experience, and now you have a story that you can bring out. Yeah. Way more fun when it's uh, fun. I don't know about that. I think it's all fun. The only problem with the phones is it's intrusive. It's intrusive. Because people aren't necessarily living in the moment there very much, and they just want to get a picture for their Facebook. And How do we look? Like, like the guy yeah. who came over to the table today while we were eating. You know, the, those guys, it happens too often. Like you're in the middle of food, you're in the middle of a conversation, uh -huh. they want to take a photo. But on the other hand, you have so much more access to information. You have so much more access to cool shit that you could find out and, and cool videos that people send you and, and memes as far memes as the amount great. of funny in your life. I, I have funny memes sent to me every day. Memes are the, maybe the best thing on the internet. The number one problem. You don't need to have it on you all the time that I get those. Yeah, that's true. But but you, you'll you miss some, mm -hmm. like because they flow like water. You know, you gotta be there where the salmon come downstream. I was in a meme group for a while um, and the rule was. A meme group? A meme group, yeah. You don't make them, you just post them. The rule was nothing but memes and you can just like or not like. If you say a word, you're kicked out of the group. If you're like, check really? this one out, you're out of the group. The meme speaks for itself. And oh, it. interesting. And it disbanded after George Floyd got killed. Oh. Ah. Yeah. People are like, oh, yeah. the sensitivity levels are wildly different in here. Right. Yeah. And, it just, uh, and the yeah. virtue signal levels. He's, yeah. That's a weird one, right? Like, if you think about what that guy did, like, how, how many times is a person murdered where it becomes literally a tipping point for an entire civilization, yep. not just in America, but all over the world, right? Uh -huh. There's George Floyd protests in fucking the Netherlands, right? But then when you find out who he was as a person, you're like, wow, this guy was a, he did bad things. Like yeah. he held a gun to a pregnant woman's stomach, apparently. Is that, yep. has that been verified? Yep. I never know what that shit. You never yeah. know. And also none of it like excuses any no, 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 not you know, for the cops. But the thing does. is, like, when they make statues of him and stuff well, like that, it's like, I like, remember uh, Fruitvale Station? The, What's uh, that? Fruitvale Station was by a guy who got killed in Fruitvale. Um, um, OCD about this mic cord. Yeah, I hear you. Fru Fruitvale, um, San Francisco, Oakland. I don't remember got that. Killed. The guy said he was reaching for a taser and he reached for his gun instead. Oh, I do remember but that. But to show yeah. the story of him, they, they, they said he just, he was a weed dealer, which is fine, especially in California. Right. 
and he's cares? like, I'm out of the game. I don't want to do this anymore. He just gave all his weed to the last guy buying from him. He's like, you can have it all. Because they couldn't make him, like, it's this thing of, like, he has to be a pure, innocent person. He has person to be a hero. In order to be killed wrong. Yeah, no weed dealer's like, I'm out of the game. Yeah, that's all my crazy. Weed. I'll sell off my stock, but I'm not. <laughs> that's like a superhero origin story. That's like when Uncle Ben got killed because Spider-Man didn't stop the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you exactly. <laughs> you gave away all yeah. your weed. Get the fuck out of here, bitch. <laughs> that's just bad business. It's silly. Nobody does that. You sell your weed, and then you stop selling it. You know, especially when you're just selling weed. I mean, weed in California is a fucking misdemeanor, even if it's illegal. You know, what like you if you oh, yeah. if you're selling le- weed without a license, that's one of the reasons why the cartel moved into uh, California. It's because you could grow in public land these massive chunks of land, and you don't really get in trouble. Like it's a misdemeanor; it's a small fine if you get caught growing weed. There's a guy named John Norris who's on my podcast. Who started Joe off Rogan experience podcast. My guest has a podcast of his own. He <laughs> might've heard of it. Experience podcast. It's uh, oh, he's family. on, um, he's a, a game warden and uh, he started off his career uh, just like, you know, checking your fishing license, that kind of stuff like they normally do. And then along, along the way, he started finding these diverted streams where the stream had dried up. And then, so they had to follow the stream and thought maybe like a farmer was illegally moving the stream or there was maybe some blockage, something happened. Uh, and, but what he found was a grow up. And Whoa. then it was uh, run by the cartel and they had these like toxic chemicals they were using for pesticides that if you smoke the weed, you get sick as fuck. And that was a lot of their weed. And so this guy goes deep into it and he finds out that there's this huge movement of cartel guys growing weed on public land and then him going yeah. from being a game warden he becomes basically like a fucking tactical operator who's wearing bulletproof vests and they got dogs and they're they're going into these places what? and having shootouts with the cartel what it become one of the, some other guys died on american soil. dogs got shot yes in the fucking wow. public land it became super dangerous he wrote a book if you're interested it's called hidden wars it's very good. Tony, you want to uh, have some trigger control and weigh in on that? You know, I just figured it's sitting next to me. He's and got his gun we're, out. we're at a range and I can do it. So why not pull it out? Here's I thought the you're thing. not supposed to put your finger. Yeah, don't put your finger on the trigger. <laughs> Safety's on, guys. Safety's on. No clipping. Safety's on. Is, well, this is, is so many people's last words. All right, I'm going to put it away. I'm going <laughs> to put it should, away. No, but we should say that, that that is a kind of gun that actually does have a safety. Most nine millimeters don't have safeties. How many people That's a were their last words? Safety's on. Oh, God. Right. Be over thousands. 100, right? Thousands. Right. Yeah. Thousands. <laughs> thousands. <laughs> I heard a horrible story about two kids fighting. Uh, two brothers were fighting, and one brother goes into his dad's drawer and pulls out a gun, and he just says, if you don't do whatever he was trying to get him to do, you don't do that, I'm going to shoot you. No. And the brother's like, fuck you, and he shoot him right in the face. He didn't know that there was one in the chamber. Oh, God. He just thought he was going to scare him, and he I blew mean, his brother's face off. Life. Oh, my God. I yeah. mean, how, who, are are who are you now? Who are you now? You're five, and you kill your brother? I love how they all jumped on Baldwin for shooting that person's like handling it wrong. Like you shouldn't have tweeted like this. Like dude, you shot someone he knew, fucking two feet away from him. Cut him some slack. I'm sorry he's not reacting the way you want him to. Well, the that Baldwin thing, which what's weird is his conversation with that guy on ABC afterwards, Stephanopoulos. Yeah. Because it's like, why did he do that? You're supposed like. Because he's an actor too. He's flailing. He's like emotionally distraught. And I'm yeah. sure his lawyers like, don't say this. Don't say that. Now you're thinking, what am I allowed to say? He has a team full of. He Publicist. does things differently. You know, these people. It's not like comedians or anything. A guy like that has a, a squadron of advisors who are like, oh my goodness. You know, the one thing that really stood out to me. Yeah. It was that picture of him hunched over in the desert Ooh. where it happened and it shows him mourning, obviously crying the day of or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, oh, everyone that sees that's going to feel bad for him. Right. And that is Tears with, and way. that is without a doubt, without a doubt. A posed picture without a doubt. Wow. Of course, they're not going to let a they're Ooh. not going to let anybody there with a camera when he's around on a. Right. Closed film set of Hibs. He's an executive producer. You think he's like? It's the this, professional you... photographer of the film. We know that that's there. We know that they so, do that. I like it. Do you think he said snap the special without? Back in the or or in somebody a, goes, hey, take a picture of him. We'll, we'll need this. Could be. That's one. a good question. But yeah. either way, that's. He's an actor. He could definitely cry if he needed to. Without a doubt. Has he ever cried in a movie? 
Is there? I'm that's sure. a hard one. I'm that's sure. coming. I'm up. Sure. Ah, Siri just popped <laughs> up. That bitch. Ask her. She's always has, ready. Has James Baldwin? No, not James. Alec, Alec. Baldwin. Hey Siri. Who Alec? the fuck's James hey, Baldwin? The guy Alec from uh, the writers. What is that? The actor studio. Yeah, that's James no. Lipton. That's James Baldwin wrote <laughs> uh, Beale Street. Uh, I could talk. Hey, Siri. <laughs> Who's James Bond? Has Alec Baldwin writer? ever cried in a movie? He has, for sure. Fans noticed something strange about Alec Baldwin's tears during the. <laughs> Alec Baldwin cries and says he didn't pull the trigger. Well, I was Alec Baldwin really crying. Yeah, it's not going to tell you. Not now. But, you know, there's nobody sneaking onto that set taking a picture yeah, of him. Right. A, Especially and, after that. Right. Shut it down. Yeah. Right. Who the fuck is James Baldwin? James Baldwin's a writer. He wrote If Beale Street Could Talk. James Baldwin. There is no James it's Baldwin. Crazy. Who wrote? American Novelist. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, it's this guy. Oh, Jesus Christ. He, he was uh, a gay intellectual in the 60s. That was, uh, he's a brilliant guy. He's got a, he's got a, a, a great documentary about him. Gay, black, intellectual. I mean, yeah. on the cusp of being accepted in this like, guy. many ways. Remember him? Yeah. yeah. I mean. No, but I read his books. Oh, college. wow. He's got some amazing uh, interviews on YouTube where you really? can, uh, yeah, you can watch him. I mean, just, uh, just. You know who I'm starting to get more respect for? I'm sorry. It's okay. Is, uh, who was the fat guy from, um, who got fat and got his own island? Got fat and got his own island. I don't know, but that sounds fat. good already. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, oh, my God. Marlon Brando. Marlon Br and everyone made fun of him. I remember when I was little. That was the, the late night joke. He got fat. Yeah. He's on an island. It's just so he could eat away. And then I've seen him in some interviews lately. Some black and white, like back then interviews. Oh, he's brilliant. Bril and it's almost like, oh, you took a lot of mushrooms and you've given up on the system. So you're not trying to play the game anymore. I think he made a ton of money and yeah. he probably didn't have to do anything else. I was in Tahiti and so they had this like mural for him and some of his quotes. And he goes, you know, I thought I could change these people with my money. And then I realized like they didn't need it at all. Like it was, I needed their help. Right. Um, and I think he just got happy. Like, what is his whole life? Why do I care about actors? Right. He didn't even accept his uh, Oscar. Yeah. He just goes to send a, like a Native American lady. He's like, you go get it. You know, when they did Apocalypse Now, the reason why they filmed him in the dark like that is because he got so fat. And he showed up for three days only. Do you ever see that documentary on Apocalypse Now, the making of? It's great. And how the guy had to bankroll it himself pretty much because no one was like, he had to borrow planes from the fucking Philippines. The so and then they, they needed it for the war. So he's like, what, what I don't think I've ever seen? seen this movie. You've it's never sick. seen Apocalypse Now? Yeah, I don't think I oh have. Oh my God, this is, I, I'm wearing my Apocalypse Now watch again. That's the Captain Willard. This is the- That is? This is the watch that Martin Sheen wore. Wow. The model, really? not the original uh, watch, but that right. Martin Sheen wore in Apocalypse Now. Huh. That's why I, I got it, because it's fucking dope. Yeah, I but they're like, that movie's like, amazing. What are you working on? I was like, what is anyone working on? What does that even mean? And the guy's like, what? <laughs> Who is this guy? Just what is like, anyone working dumb. on? <laughs> yeah. Well, he was so good, man. If you go back and watch some of his films, I mean, The Godfather, go go yeah. back and watch, just watch uh, Streetcar Named Desire. Pat, watch the old stuff. Is that him? No, What's that's George Scott. No, what is he in the one where he plays a boxer? I could have been a contender. Uh huh. What was that? That's on the a, waterfront. Yeah, that's it. I mean, he that, that movie, a lot of people think changed the way actors act in movies because that was back in the day when everybody acted fake because they acted like they acted in Broadway where you have to make everything big because they didn't have microphones. Oh, right. So they had to play to the back of the house. So everything they did, yeah, that. everything was big. And so he came along and acted real. And like, what the I, wa I um, watched King Kong once with my kids yeah. and they were real nervous because they were real little at the time. I go, no, no, no. This is funny. I'm telling you, we're going to watch the old the King Kong. Playmation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, why does everybody Stop act watching. like that? I go, don't you know? So like my kids who are at the time, I think like six and four or something like that. <laughs> they were like, we're realizing how yeah. goofy people are acting. Why is this guy <laughs> overacting? Like, what are you doing? Where's yeah. the director? What are, what are these choices? Grover is a better actor than you. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Do you know that there's now an Asian um, Muppet and people are like, do you not understand that yeah, I think all I know. the Muppets were animals? <laughs> yeah. They they were they no, no humans. Race. They have no race. That was the what's, whole what's point. The green one. What, what yeah. race is that? What is Oscar the Grouch? Uh -huh. What the fuck is Kermit? Oh, he's a frog. But he's what is... Um, yeah, he's pretty clearly a frog. But I mean, what is Bert, rather? What's Bert yeah, Ernie? What Bert Ernie? The fuck are they? Gays, they said a lot, right? Oh, they got a big gay probably. Thing you guys on them. know what this Asian Muppet's name is? I think I dealt with them this year. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but the idea that they they thought that was a good idea to bring a, a Asian Muppet. It's just like, and also like, do you not know how much ammunition you're giving the racist to see Asian eyes on a fucking sock? Right. Like how how? <laughs> it's a little talking? more complicated than a sock. I don't know. Whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, they're like puppets. Yeah, I'm minimizing it for comedic. Sesame <laughs> Street. Interesting shit, right? Yeah. Why, why do we why do we humanize animals so much for mm-hmm. kids? That part's weird. Oh, it's oh, real lions weird. are cute. For it's always the dangerous ones too, like bears. You got to make teddy them bears. Hello. Yeah. Like Imagine if Big Bird was real, like how frightened everybody would be. Yeah. They had a great Sprite commercial. It went back and it was like, keep it real, the Sprite. And it was like an old, like 70s commercial style. And the mom's going, hi kids, you ready for breakfast? And then this cartoon son comes in and goes, don't forget the goodness of orange juice. And they're all like, what the fuck is that? Get out of here. And the mom falls. She's like, kids, run. <laughs> and he's like, I just want to make it say yeah. hi. I remember that. Like, what would really that, go on? That really is hilarious. I booked a commercial one time because they said, like, um, someone's coming out with a pizone and he's going to offer it to your, your, like, stocking shelves or something like that. And they're like, all right, so take this pizone and pretend like you like it. And they go, now do a real one. And I'm like, uh, and I'm like, um, like, hey, do you want a pizone? I'm like, hey, dude, we're working. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, you can't be in here doing that. What's a pizone? Uh, it's like a calzone pizza. Oh. And then the guy I left with, he goes, hey, thanks for ruining it for both of us. And then he watched me in that commercial. <laughs> if you could give your teenage self some specific advice, this would be good. what would it be? Teenage, it's up to you, 13 to 19. There's a part of me that immediately, my gut tells me to enjoy life and do, you know what I mean, and That's breathe it one. in. But the other, as soon as I thought that, I'm like, no, 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 no. If I told myself that, I wouldn't have you worked at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had the crazy work ethic. Uh, so point. immediately I'm like, uh, work your ass off and then have fun. So I don't know. I would say, hey, chicks also want to fuck, just so you know. But... <laughs> Ah. You didn't know that by then? No, I thought it was like doing something bad to them or that something. That is, that's, that's, oh, that's hilarious. Like yeah. The religion still in oh, the religion stuff, of course. Yeah. And also, yeah, it feels like because you're only talking with boys about it, it feels like something that we want to do. It does. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Yeah, right. And it's like they couldn't. Because you're like. Meanwhile, they're talking about what we didn't realize is they were talking about what they w- yeah. wanted to do why to boys. Always, why are there no cucumbers in this house left? Yeah. Right. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would also say, hey, if you ever hear anything, just the words bit and coin, put it all in. The first moment you hear it. Oh, my God. Put it all oh, in. Wow. You imagine. probably have like five grand saved up. Oh. Put it all in. Imagine you had five grand worth of Bitcoin in like, what was the first year? Like, like 2004 or something. I went, who knows? My God, it was probably worth People a know. penny. Mm-hmm. You would be worth a billion dollars. God damn it. Wow. Did we talk about that guy yesterday that's been combing the landfill for eight years? For leftover Bitcoins? Yeah, he's got a half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and a hard drive that he accidentally threw away. And so for Treasure eight, hunting. For eight years, they've wow. been combing this landfill trying to find eight, this hard how drive. How much? Half a billion. Oh, yeah. wow. So, so for eight years, he's had he got- people combing the landfill. Has he gotten it? No. Uh, how much has he spent? Do we know? Who knows? Uh, millions, I'm sure. I'm like, for I'll eight years. On this if I find it. But here's the thing. It's like, if he gets it, who knows if it's not degraded, oh, right? right? The right. moisture from the rain and all the bullshit and coming through all the chemicals that are going through the soil. You've got heaps and heaps mm-hmm. and heaps of rotting bullshit on top of your... That's the only thing I never got behind on Bitcoin and all those things, which like, it can just go away if you don't care for it, right? Yeah, but so if could you have a flood yeah. paper, you know, you can, yeah. you know, you have a fire, you have a but million a dollars or something or like, but what if you have it in your house? Right, right, right. Yeah. I wish I understood Bitcoin. It's it's interesting. I understand it way better than I understand NFTs. Yeah. NFTs. I'm still like, it's not the same thing. Just selling on the idea of popularity. I, I, I don't get I don't even know. Why it's I confusing. That. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. <laughs> I'm a guy who doesn't invest. I'm just like, listen, I'm happy with what I have saved up. I don't want to be thinking about stocks and shit. Right. That's good. Uh, under yeah. the mattress is fine for me. Yeah. Oh, you told everybody where your money is. Oh, no. Fucked up, <laughs> It definitely son. wasn't a metaphor for the bank. You fucked up, son. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I'm fr- I've made friends with all these like wild, cool Texas billionaires like out on the golf course and stuff. And they're always like, so how are you maximizing your profits in your industry? And I'm like, what? 
<laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> How are you trying I get to like, maximize your huh? I like get a cut of the tickets. Dude, I'm thinking show. of a funny way to describe my penis. We're on different wavelengths. Yeah. Yeah, totally. You only have so much bandwidth. This is something to take into consideration. You should probably tell this to your teenage self, too. Okay. If you want to give yourself advice. Yeah. You only have so much time in the day. And if you could just be objective about the amount of time that's useless, like worrying about what other people think about you or worrying about what they're doing or diminishing what they're doing, being jealous or petty, it's an instinct. It's a natural instinct that humans and even chimps have. We have, we just have, you have to recognize what that is. You're never going to be pure of it. You're never going to cleanse yourself of it entirely. But you could do well to know that that's a thing that you keep in your head. And if you can push it aside and, and actively realize what you're doing, why you're doing it, and spend less time on it, the, whatever less time you spend doing nonsense and stupid shit and wasteful things, especially like petty things, you'll have more bandwidth for the other things that you really should be doing, like working on your career. That's solid or, advice. Like, why are you worried about them? Exactly. And then, and then also, actually ask that question. Why are you worried about them? Because you're probably not accomplishing what you want. So you're like, let me take them down. And the so, reason why oh, I can I say do. this too is because like at scale, when you get popular enough where you you could spend your whole day wondering about other people's opinions of you and you can go search search them out and you will literally go insane and we know people have done that uh -huh. they've literally gone mad just oh. searching through their comments and reading their comments and and go doing google searches on themselves mm -hmm. and been finding there. out what for people sure say there. about them yeah yeah like, what the fuck? Like, you'll go crazy and yeah. it's not good for you it's like you don't have any time for that your your time is precious it's very precious. Yeah. You know, we were just talking the other day, uh, me and Bruce, and we were saying, you know, he was talking about uh, his grandfather, a conversation that he had with his grandfather once, that his grandfather still thinks like he, he thought when he was 25. He like, I still feel like the same person. Yeah. He goes, but I'm like this whole fucking bag of bones now. Like it's, he goes, I still I have a brain like a young guy. Yeah. I think of myself as I did when I was 25, but I'm not 25 anymore. I'm like this fucking wretched old man. So he goes, when I see a hot chick, I still think she's a hot chick, but she looks at me like, ew, this is gross dead man. And then I realize, oh my God, that's only 20 years from now for me. Wow. That's nothing. 20 years from now, I'm 74 years old. Don't Whoa. get worried about what people think yeah. too. Whoa. Yeah, that's not very long. That's how little time you have. You, you got you got young. fucking you're yeah. like Jack Lalane or something though, dude. You have like those <laughs> energies. He's gonna to like a, look a like a one strap that. bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like that. Old school. You got Jack Lalane energies, bro. <laughs> well, I hey, what's your heavy bags collection like? <laughs> I have three heavy bags. You're gonna be Not kicking. Bags, the medicine balls. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I don't. I have a couple of those. Uh, that's the other thing too. Me and Ryan O'Neill were skiing and we were like, let's go to like the terrain park and do jumps and we jump two feet off the ground ruin your knees yeah but like uh <laughs> but anyway there's all these like cool kids 17 to 24 year olds who know yeah. how to do flips and shit and yeah. he goes it's interesting because between 15 and about 40 we'd be too embarrassed to come here and now that we're fully adults we're like yeah we're not gonna be as good as you we're, can I it's go next? okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care but yeah but, right, i waste a lot of time go i don't know everybody's gonna look at me not right. seeing movies by yourself because oh what's right. everyone gonna look at me and think i'm, an, I'm a loser right. oh yeah like it's, it's, I'm yeah. bored. I remember right. being so embarrassed first time I went to see a movie by myself. I think I was a professional comic on the road when I did it. Yeah, we're just like I just want to fill time. Yeah, yeah. and it's super enjoyable. You oh, yeah. get to there's no Put fucking distractions. Up. Yep. Afternoon show. Yeah. Yep. You Popcorn. don't have to share an armrest with anybody. You don't have to worry about them. What everybody always does something weird. I always hate something that everybody I've ever seen a movie with does. It's like, you're really chewing your popcorn like that? Yeah, why are you uh, reaching into the popcorn? Why do you, why are you, how, how, can you make more noise with that wrapper? Well, <laughs> oh, how about people that start <laughs> texting and then you see the bright oh, white phone? Oh, fuck that. That was Tripoli, went to see Jackass 2, I think, in like Vancouver or something. And uh, I was like, hey, dude, I'm very excited for this movie. You, you can't be on your phone. This was early Tripoli like addiction. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay. And then he had to. He, you can't just tell someone not be addicted. Uh, got up and went to the back and did it. And I was like, all right, you yeah. met me halfway. Yeah, that's better. But yeah, like you think everyone's in the movie theater is going to stop and look at you. Like, are you here alone? Hey, everybody, look at this loser. Bro, I've heard people talking on their phone in the movie. It's hey, what's nuts. up? Yeah, yeah, I'm at the movies. And you're like, what the fuck, the man? The complete yep. lack of care about anyone else in the fucking world. Yep. 
oh, I want to smash those people's faces in. Yeah, there's a lot of And that's another thing up. I've noticed in just my, again, my short time here in Texas, major difference here between here and California with that, for sure. That type of stuff, like Texan, you know, stuff there's just like, more of like a gentleman, be a good person type of thing. Like, talk to Simone about it. He's the ultimate good person. Yeah. And he goes, you know, when you can't make a left, but you're like, oh, I have to. You know, right. and so you're like, I'm just going to, and everyone's honking at you. Like, we're all trying to go. And you're, and he's like, well, what do you mean to do? It's like, go and take longer. Right. Like, be aware yeah. there's other people around. Yeah. You yeah. fucked up. You missed yeah. the turn, so keep going. Yeah. Yeah. You missed the turn. Yeah. Just stop everyone just for you. Just wait it out. Yeah. You make a U turn up ahead. But God, that's so prevalent in California. God I've never seen more is. people take those left turns when the light turns red. Just right into the Four, incoming five, traffic. Six in a row. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. One guy does it. Fuck it. I'm doing it too. Ugh. Go behind him. Oh. Just justified for no reason. Blech. Ugh. Fucking LA. A lot of cuts. LA. Not all California. But Fresno's not all. Like, a lot of Fresno's Californians like are cool. But a lot of people are just like way too driven and ambitious. And also, how many of them are trying to make up for like whatever deficits they have as a person with success, right? They're making up for a tortured childhood. They're making up for, you know, whatever the fuck it is. And they're just trying to make it in this crazy town where it's all about status and your, your showy wealth. You yeah. know, I remember uh, reading this story recently about people getting robbed in LA. People getting a lot of people getting robbed. Sure. And um, this guy got robbed. He had a half a million dollar watch on, oh. and he was sitting outside in a Beverly Hills restaurant. Oh. And the guy came up to him, put a gun to his head, and took. It's a Richard Mille watch. They're they're kind of like crazy looking, like real fancy watches. And damn, and this what? dude stole his watch, put a gun. I'm like, why are you outside with a half a million dollar watch? And then I went, oh, it's L.A. It's L.A. You got to be showy. Dead. Remember Diaz? I remember us being at wasn't the standard or something. It was we were on a patio daytime, and um, Diaz saw a guy with leather pants on. And it was like 85 <laughs> degrees, and it was like noon. And he goes, look at his fucking rocker. He's trying to live it his whole life, but he only has one pair of pants. Uh, it's just a sweaty daytime wearing these fucking leather pants. Yeah, that's hilarious. Well, there's some of those guys that like there was like a look that you had to have, and those guys had that look. Sun- period. They Sunset Strip, rock and roll. Yeah, leather pants. What's Earl Skakel still wears leather pants. He lives, you know, right Earl there. Skakel. He lives on the Sunset Strip. But he's got money. He can have multiple pairs. <laughs> yeah, Skakel's yeah. Like, well, yeah. Fun. What's yeah. that place? The 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 next to the Roxy. The one place where everybody goes, the, the Rainbow Bar Rainbow, and Grill. Yeah, Rainbow, Rainbow That's Room. Right. The Rainbow Best Pizza. The fucking uh, very good pizza. The, um, pepperonis would curl yeah. up. Mm. Ron Jeremy and the lead singer of uh, Motorhead was always there. Lemmy. Lemmy. All these pictures of uh, Kinnison there on their yeah. little bulletin pictures. All the rock and roll people. And that's right next door was where Kinnison did his HBO special. Oh, really? He did it at the Roxy. Damn. And that place wow. is still, that was, it's a time machine. Mm-hmm. It's still like, oh, we're still <clears throat> heavy 80s metal. Yeah, oh, man. They, those people are still hanging on. Uh-huh. They go I, those those eighties rocker girls that are now in their sixties, <laughs> and they still tease their hair up, and they go there, and they get a little too drunk, and they can still get it. I can't imagine what that little area is going through right now because I we we all watched it decline, obviously, and. You know, I mean, just look at Lemmy and Ron Jeremy themselves, who we just referenced. Like, Ron, oh my God, we found out he's a rapist. He's in jail forever. Lemmy's dead. The rest of his life. There's no scene there. Like, there's just these amazing clubs that are like, uh sort of like standing museum graveyards. Is it it, the same as Haight Ashbury? It makes you wonder about the. It's still selling what it used to be, but it's not that anymore. Right. Right. So it's still like, oh, look at these kids. Like, these kids came in and they got dropped off in the Mercedes by their parents. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like this isn't these aren't beatniks, you know. And the Sunset Strip is like, remember this used to be Nashville is the same thing on like the honky tonk road. Yeah, but and that's it's like still these are all sold out ones. Yeah, well, sort of. That that's pretty that sweet, though. right? Anymore. Right? Yeah. The Sunset Strip is not that rocker place anymore. Right. It's yeah. Tourists. Nashville's still cool though. That Nashville that, that strip on Nashville is awesome. Street. Right. Bro, Sixth Street is the shit. No, not where, here. Where we were last night though, we were drove we drove past there last night. I'm like, look how wild this street is. People are all out there. There's food oh, yeah. trucks. Everybody's we having a good time. We went out after around. dinner last night. We had to drink at a place called. Dude, but, got it. Got what? it. What Why? Happened? I don't say names of places. Why? You'll ruin it. Oh, we've, I've ruined a lot of places. What? A, a, a nice bar? Yeah. 
you'll just have tons of fucking tourists showing up there to be like, this is the one Tony talked about. I'm going to show it's it's cool. It says fine business. I don't ruin places. Oh, right. Maybe it's better for the I business. I get yeah. it. What are you talking prick. about? That's you're you're helping out. a too place. Much reach. Too much reach. I get Do it. Do it for I me. It. Keep it in for me this How time. How many downloads do you think this will get? At least 150. Probably, probably a lot. A lot. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Like in the hundreds of thousands of people will listen to this. And it's like. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. I don't, I don't know what night they're going to show up. chick who killed him. And she's like, let me say the name of the place. He goes, are you nuts? You want a line of American tourists coming to this awesome restaurant? And she's such a dumb fucking actress. She's like, maybe I would like that. And he's like, think it through. No, you don't. Well, go, go check out Austin is what you should say. There's plenty of places. Find your own place. They're amazing places. Don't go to that place because I want to go back there. I it's like your perspective. Really. I want a bunch of fans there. However, I like to pump up businesses <laughs> and, yeah, and help here. them. There's and, always going to be fans there. Well, okay. I like to pump up businesses. I hear you. It makes me feel good. Um, well, can I describe the place? Yeah, for sure. So First of all, this, tell me the name. Well, it's <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's called... <laughs> yeah, and so what they did was is <laughs> they took a... Marissa. You're not getting paid more for this. Keep, yeah. keep it you in, get, Marissa. You this? Mar- don't, 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 don't. Marissa, keep it in. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> uh, Ari has weird rules. <laughs> So they took a they took like a budget of money. I don't know. We'll say I don't know fifty thousand or something. And and they went like antique shopping, like really oh. cool. Like the couches still have the plastic on them. Everything's it's meant to piece. make it feel like a grandmother's oh. house. It's an art piece, dining yep. room table. You yep. can sit at a couches. Yep. Uh, a pool and we table all with did. the old Schlitz stuff above it. And we oh, all nice. sat. Cool and thing. we all sat at a dining room table last night. Just drinks kept coming to us, and we were all laughing. And it's just cozy, real cozy. And there's a pool table in the back too. I and got to uh, a nice talk with you know. Oh, Sarah, that yeah, who works at the whatever about yeah. like immersive. Yeah, work. you're gonna have to cut that out, Marissa, because we don't want her to be annoyed by fans. What if she gets hit up by fans, bro? Don't say her <laughs> name. She, uh, she uh, all right. Change, make it Sarah without the H. Drop that last H. Just about the immersive, like the new like style of art to where they doll up a whole place. Mm-hmm. Ideally used on mushrooms, but there's in every major city they'll have these. And yeah. that place is that. It's just, it's an art project. It's so cool to be in it. You feel like you're there. That's dope. Hey, I hate to do this, but I have to go pick my kid up from school. I realize it's we're getting right. a little long in the tooth in this show here. Nice having you, man. Tony, we'll keep going. I'm glad I did it, man. It's yeah, fun. Thanks. You guys keep going, but uh, I enjoyed this very much. It's fucking, there's something really fun about just a hang, uh-huh. yeah. you know? I mean, just yesterday with us, we, we did a podcast with uh, Shane and Norman and Ari and myself, and we, we just were Shoot morons, drunk. We did, we shotgun beers, and it's like, God, it was so fun. And then we did a show together, yeah. and then we went and feasted. What a day. Yeah. I mean, great. what a day. From 3 p.m. on, it was fucking amazing. It is cool too. You're gonna to see this. Well, this happened in La Jolla. All the comics coming here are on vacation, so they're like, "Let's let's have fun." You yeah, know? right. They're here right. Like, having fun. That's what La Jolla used to be, and then they would come to L.A. Like, we hanging out? Like, no, man. I've no one's hanging tomorrow. out in L.A. Yeah. 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 Well, especially now at the store, it's like I keep hearing that it's not a hang anymore. That people do their sets and go <sighs> home, and that makes me sad. Which boggles my mind. It's it makes like me sad. the backbone of that place is supposed to be the hang. It's the, like there was the a hang, hang before Dude, it was filled. And everyone was still feeling COVID. And so it's like you're talking to people and New York had gotten over it, over the mental, like, we're all yeah. worried. Yeah. And they were still had it there. And it, you're talking in the back. My mask's off because it's all people I know. And, uh, you know, and they're like, everyone's like, Ugh. I'm like, oh, really? They're all yeah. brainwashed, man. It's, it's fascinating how, I mean, obviously COVID's a real thing and it's bad and we've all had it. But it's fascinating how different cities approach it depending upon the message that they've gotten from their government. Yeah. And the government in L.A. is like, we got to shut things down. You can't go outside and eat. It's too dangerous. You can't go to gyms. It's too dangerous. You can't have comedy. It's too dangerous. You can't have outside comedy. It's too dangerous. Like we, The outside comedy was a wild That was one. crazy. So that's when New York thrived was the outside comedy. You guys yeah, were thriving funny. and we were starving. Well, yeah. I was already out. Tony yeah. and I were already gone. Yeah. We, we, Tony and I were early adopters of the Austin lifestyle. We were, it was incredible that you guys were allowed to do outdoor stuff. We were trying to do that 
at the comedy store at the time and it was like okay yep. we were allowed oh they came in they cracked down we're not allowed to do it anymore bunch of rats yeah yep new york and, has uh, the real rats and la has the fucking yeah other rats. tattletales there's cunts everywhere you go but they did that with roast battle too remember that it's yeah stuff some fucking roast battle i mean we were doing kill tony it's a, sometimes i hear people or see things where you know people will be like i don't know about this move to austin for kill tony like la had a bigger pot of comedians they you know people Please. just complain about anything but i think here. they forget i know but i think they forget that we were stuck doing that show in an empty main room it was like a studio oh. lot with no audience so it was horrendous Even so live podcast without a live audience sucks yeah Anyway, we made the best out of it. We did stupid things and had William doing sit-ups and like, you know what I mean? Stupid shit. We made the best out of it. But the worst of times. It's literally the band of the, on the Titanic playing while the ship is sinking. Uh, yeah. But you got through it. Well, we had to get out here. better now. Yeah, we had to get to where... The Tony shows at Vulcan a, are wilder than any of the shows I've ever been in LA. Tony Hitchcock has a podcast, a live show, a recorded live show called Kill Tony. It's on YouTube. You can see every episode on youtube.com slash... Kill Tony. Kill Tony. <laughs> it's the best live comedy show in the country, in the world. It's fun it to really do is. Too. It's fucking awesome. And it's such a great resource for young up and coming comics. Like Brian Simpson, that was his first big set. Just and got on Netflix. He, yeah, and he just had an amazing special that's out right now on Netflix. Preacher Lawson won America's Got Talent. We found him like six, seven years ago. You can, there's yep. video Preacher of me Lawson. telling yep. him that he's going to be oh, a know. huge star. It's amazing how many people have come from that yeah, and actually gone it. on to yeah. develop real careers. All right, I gotta go. Yeah, buddy, All thanks. Right. Love you guys. Yeah, fun times. Enjoy your bang bang. Will do. Where do I get bullets from? That? that guy at like the desk? <laughs> I get nine millimeter? <laughs> <nine>. <laughs> I fucking almost got a hundred bucks. I did that once. I said, can I interview? I'll give a hundred bucks. And she was like, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Yeah. All right, see you guys. Thanks, bud. All right, you know what? I'm gonna drop this one, and I'm gonna switch to this one. Oh, okay, I'll just keep this one. Yeah. Here's a good one. Okay. You know what I would like to ask you, because I hate comparisons. Mm -hmm. I heard this quote once, I think it was Mark Twain, comparison is a thief of joy. Mm -hmm. When you're like saying like, I like this, but that was better. It's like, you're taking away, see a great dunk, and like, it's not just go, that was a great donkey. You're like, oh, so-and-so did a better job. It's right. like, now you've lowered this for no reason. Yeah. Tell me what you like about Austin without comparing it to LA. Just like, oh, here's a fun, cool. I mean, there's so much. Uh, the art here is more on the forefront. Great art scene. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's right there. The music is blatant. It is um, accepting, it's warm. It's welcoming. It has real weather. It has uh, unbelievable restaurants. Again, not comparing it to anything, but if I were to, don't, it, don't, it's okay. I mean, don't, yeah, because that's when right. you get into like the restaurants yeah. here are good, and then people go, like, "Well, New York is better." It's like, I'm not saying that. Yeah. No, dude, there's no question. Yeah, but and, but it's like there, people ask me too about the scene. What's better? Like this is like five years ago. Yeah. LA and New York. What's a better comedy scene? And you're like. You start to answer, and then you're like, but by the way, open mic, you'll be great in either spot. Right. They're both amazing spots, top two in the world, yep. two of the top three in the world. Mm -hmm. So, like, relax. Yeah. You want to say, oh, well, this one sucks, but it's like, that's not the truth. There's an overall, uh, you know, the freeway system here is much better. The houses are a little bit cozier, warmer, less of that modern vibe. Freeway it's system here sucks. What? Freeway system here sucks. No. With all the ins and outs. It's always been terrible. It was never made for this many people. But now you're doing comparison to make it better because like LA's worse. This is one of the top 10 worst freeway systems. No, it's not. It is. No, you have it's it backwards. Junk. You don't even drive. You haven't driven in decades. Well, I've driven here plenty you, of times. It's passenger? always crazy traffic. What are you it's talking about? It's always crazy traffic. The, the, the infrastructure here was not made for this many people. I it's live a here. standard. I live here. I do things every day. Yeah. I drive every single day. It's There's never traffic. Ever. What do you consider traffic? When you, you know, you can't move for a while. It literally never happens. Doubles your... When I, when, and I'm saying it never happens. Well, I don't know what changed them. Because it was always like, fuck. Are you stuck. In Houston, shit's a little bit clunkier. You know, the Texas cities are all different. Houston's a crazy city like 
it, it, people never really talk about it. You picture it like another different. It's like oh, it's like another Texas city. No, yeah. it's it's like Chicago For spread Milwaukee. out on crack. It's right. like insane. Also, so, the rich people there are oil rich. Yeah, which is a different kind mm-hmm, of rich. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there's clearly the freedom thing here. What about is, this? Okay. Unbelievable, and Your I think that that helps me. mental health or across the boards. Like, I think that uh, you mean personal freedoms, like do whatever you want, kind of shit. Sort of, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like being able to fucking have a gun, and uh, you know, <laughs> have that. I just put that on the couch in between. Yeah, us. I mean, you know, being able to do this shit right here. <laughs> it's so weird because that seems wrong, and I'm like, we are at a gun range. Yep. <laughs> so people aren't even Still looking out. at you. Yeah. A little boy in there. <laughs> it's yeah. A little fucking eight year old over there. <laughs> So let me fucking no, my first gun. <laughs> um, um, my nephew just wrote a, 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 a here's what I did on Hanukkah for his school, mm. and he you know he's five or six, so he can't right. spell anything right. And he wrote uncle as uncool, my Aww. uncool. And I'm like, I don't care for that at all. I don't find that cute. You could have been K E W L. I'd be fine. Un re- what? <laughs> You're uncool. My uncool does it. I'm the coolest guy in your motherfucking family, dude. It's true. That is true. You are the coolest guy in the family. I'm um, sure of that. What about the chicks here? I mean, this is, again, oh. it's just not even, it's not fair because it's. Texas <clears throat> chicks, dude. There's something about them. They're wild. Yeah. They're and wild. And then they're not like Miami. Right. But it's funny you mentioned that because I was just going to say, you, know, you ever notice in Florida how the women like want to have fun? They want to have fun. They, uh-huh. they, they, they want to have fun with boys and they want to also have fun with their friends, but they want to have fun. It's just a different vibe. And um, and they're horny. Horny as fuck. There's mm-hmm. something about the heat. There's something about humidity. It, it without a doubt affects things. Yeah. And um, and so you have a little bit of both of that. Humid, and yeah. you have the... Have, have you ever a- noticed how pretty girls are in Columbus, Ohio? No. Well, there's a thing there. There's something in the water. It's a corn fed beef type of um, thing where there's like real natural beauty. It's not the L.A. Valley girl covered in makeup, klutzy thing that's ugly when you wake up next to her in the morning type of vibe. Yeah. It's a beautiful girl that's beautiful all the time. And maybe she has a couple of things wrong with her, but she's beautiful. There's a lot of that here, too. Interesting. It's a type of I think I don't want to. I don't think it's in the water. I think it's in the fucking food. It's the upbringing or something. Yeah. It's just the general vibe. Yep. It, it, it's like there's these vibes. So like Morrissey, you know Morrissey, mm-hmm. the the band, yeah, the singer. He's big among Latino Latinos in um in Southern California, and you're like, what? It doesn't make any sense. You know, like that doesn't sound like the vibe of Morrissey of his emo fans. Adam Eagle would be a Morrissey fan, you right. know, yeah. But you don't think a Latino. And then it, it you really it traced back probably to one cool Latino guy going, I love the Ben the Smiths. And then, ooh, if, if he likes it, if Juan likes it, I like it too. And it just spread from there. Yeah. I think there was some awesome slut here in, in Texas yeah. like generations ago and just set the tone. Here's another thing about Austin without comparing it to anywhere else is um, you, can, um, you can make real friends here that are comedians it's been how's un- that been having friends outside of the industry in any way because in la new yeah. york didn't have this problem right in la because we're a minor industry uh, showbiz and comedy but in la it is the industry right so how is it talking to normcore people well here's what's interesting is there a lot of them uh you know are special in their own way if it makes sense like special they, olympics yeah they have like a little backstory maybe again maybe it's texas oil money maybe it's uh you know maybe they run this business or maybe they do that but like for, first of all working hard here goes without saying like that's natural texas shit Working hard. Yeah. Whereas California, obviously quite different. If you make money anyway, then you're okay. What do you mean? He's, um, if you can survive, then you're good. If you look if you look like you're making money, you're good. It, that, right. The image is important right. there. And it's here, not here it means nothing. I'm wearing sweat. You know what I mean? Like, I remember t- asking Yael uh, about, um, about um, I was moving to New York. And I was like, hey, could a guy get laid if he has a studio apartment? Because I went from that awesome, you know, right. the sweetest. Yeah, super place cool apartment. Yeah. In, in, uh, in LA. Yep. Um, to, with a pool in the middle, you know? Yeah. Um, I love it. 
Yeah, and then to full kitchen to be like, I can't afford that in New York. So can I get a studio? I'm like, can a guy get laid if he has a studio? Because in LA, you can't. Unless you're real poor, they look at you, like young, they right. look at you like, ugh. Right. And she goes, uh, oh, if you don't have a roommate in New York, that's a sweet selling point. Uh, <laughs> so she's like, no one will care if the bed's yeah. in, the, in the first room you enter. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So here they don't care at all? Like what kind of car you drive or? No, so if you do, it's that much more of a bonus. You know, it's like, cool. Interesting. Oh, this will be fun. This will be a fun ride. I mean, I'm really stoked on the idea of getting this comedy scene going. A brand new comedy scene. There was a there was a old Star, Star Trek, uh, the movie, where they in, made When's a- the last time you were on a lineup like you were on Tuesday? Me, you, Gillis, Norman, Segura, Rogan, Hans Kim, the young buck who kills to start the show. That level, I would say... It's been a while, a couple of years, the store or, or, or a crazy seller the, show. The stand will have one sometimes. You're like, Jesus Christ. Like, right. Not start to finish like that. Right. I would say there was a show that me and, and uh, um, we put on list um, in a PS in a public, old public school that's now like affordable housing, but artists got in. <laughs> so it wasn't like poor people, it was artists. So they never left. And we had in the downstairs, they're like, can we use the conference room? We put on a show. It was... It was the three of us who ran it. Uh, but you, Joe List. Joe List. And fuck, I forget his name. Boston guy. Ah, fuck it, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Fitzsimmons. Mm-hmm. Attell. Ooh. Big J. Uh-huh. Louis. Love it. Pre yep. everything. Um, and it was just like, it was the same thing as what we had on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. There's no better show in the world tonight right. than the show we put on. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, you don't get those that often. Well. But also, that's not completely normal. We're here. expecting a lot of that. We've been doing that. You know, it's a lot of, oh, tonight it's Tim Dillon, Segura, me, Rogan. It's What I like, too, is the guy the, the, when the, no one knew what Fahim was or right. Santino was, right. you know, or Theo was. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, we have, it's David Spade and Sarah Silverman and then Joe Rogan. Who was that guy in the middle? Right. It's like he just had the fame, but. Right. He's as good as any comic that's, in the world. You to know? me, that's what it's all about. It's quality. I mean, there's nothing worse than a disappointing celebrity set, right? And that's like, it's all you sort get. of sad. Dude, the it's, first time I saw Ron White, the yeah, store, yeah, because he wasn't there, and then he was. Right. And it was like, oh, cool. We knew him from, you know, Kings yeah. of Com- not Kings of Comedy, the Blue, Blue Collar. Blue collar and yeah. just like his own stuff. Best opener to a special maybe ever. He goes, my wife got the crazy idea that I'm cheating on her. I am, and here's why. Yeah. <laughs> it was immediately like turning yeah. the crowd to like make a choice. Yeah. Um, um, but he had not a great set. I'm not mm-hmm. busting balls here or anything. Right, and he's probably and I'm probably like, oh, wasted. Sure, without maybe. a doubt. Yeah. And I saw him first time I'd seen him. Then I'd been there for a decade, mm-hmm. so he just I probably just hasn't been there ever. Right. And I was like, hey man, good set. Which I was lying. Yeah. Because I was like <sighs> impressed by I'm getting to talk to Ron White, and and he knows who he is and what he's capable of always, and he just goes. Eh. Right. And I was like, why did I even say that? Yeah. He knows it wasn't. Right. And I know it wasn't. So now we can't talk. Right. This t- I'll have to meet him again fresh at the time. Yeah. Cause like, here's a bullshitter. Right. Right to my fucking face. Yep. Or you suck and you think that was good. Right. <laughs> was you so know, he's funny. sober now. Oh, I heard that. And he's fucking ripping, man. He has, I'm not going to do any of them, but he yeah, has jokes that I know. Like that are, and I can't say that about almost anybody. Like there's, a, there's one joke that I could say. He has the best Cosby joke. Damn. And it's like, it, it's just wild. To, <clears throat> it's incredible to be that close to a beast who was running at, I don't know, 20, 40% his entire career, it turns out. And now, now he's glowing and his timing and his execution is fucking it's a, it crazy. Holds you and it plays, all time. it plays a role. It plays a role. You know how like groggy, even if just like, doing a podcast but you're hungover you know oh, you're not as good yeah. as if you're fresh story of my life yeah yeah and so like I like when a tell quit drinking everyone's like what but he's known as a guy who can handle it it's like yeah when he was 30 and now he's 50 like, right it goes away and he got he got stronger too he got way better right noticeably like yeah. jesus christ yep. dude i don't know if it was possible for david hell yep. at another level but fuck i don't shit. think there's many people that Truly, I mean, you know, we talk about these echelons of who's the greatest. Yeah. And you compare Bill Burr and Louis and Chappelle and it goes on and on. But truly, I really believe at the end of the day, 
that the undisputed, undefeated, current ranking number one, if it was like boxing or UFC, that it would be Dave Attell. What do he, you think he, about that? I think he's... It, so... What do you think Louis would say? What do you think Bill Burr would say? I don't think they would go, you're wrong. I would think they would go, Louis and Bill are cool enough too, to like not like get into a like puff chest thing about right. it. And they'd want to say I'm the best, you know, but like, but like, I think they'd be like, that's an acceptable argument. Yeah. You know, or like, yeah, I can't fault you on that. You know, right. I remember when like Bill was trying to take over from Louis mm -hmm. at the throne mm -hmm. and it was like, he wouldn't say Louis sucked. He was like, right. I'm almost, I, or I've been beating you, but you've got more fame for now. And then right. it's like, you'll, people will recognize me soon. And they did. Yeah. Um, and then Louis abdicated for a while. <laughs> Dude, I brought Joe List to open for me a couple times yeah. right after that, early yeah. 2018. And I was like, guys, this next comic's been opening for, for Louis C.K. on the road. Luckily, he became available to us. <laughs> His loss is our gain. Please welcome Joe List. <laughs> uh. um, one time, Atel, I might have told this before, I don't care, I love this story. So Chappelle comes in, just in terms of like what people think is the best. Chappelle and comes into where? This comedy cellar. Okay. And me and a teller sitting on the stoop outside, just like uh, shitting on passerbys, yep. you know, having fun, smoking Love cigarettes. It. Smoking about cigarettes. Comedy. That's what I do when I'm there with him. And uh, and David Tell, well, how should I say it? Chappelle, I'll say his last name only. Mm -hmm. um, Chappelle comes in and then he pops his head back up and he goes, or as he's going in, he stops, comes back up and he goes, Dave, uh, a tell. He called him Dave. But he goes, a tell, uh, have you gone on yet? And he goes, no, not yet. Back up, sorry, back up the story. Attell's always like, do you want to switch? So I'll, me, David Attell will go on last and Ari, you can go on second to last. Because mm -hmm. usually she has me on last. Me or Godfrey, Big J used to have it a lot and do more seller spots. And if it was like, hey, him and Jeff Ross are gonna do bumping mics for 45 minutes, I'm like, let me go on ahead of you. Right. But if it's just regular David Attell doing 20, I'm like, give me the test. Like, yeah. this is a Tuesday, I right. want the test more yeah. than I want to shine. Absolutely. You know? So, and what a great test to follow Dave Attell at the very end of a dead night. Right. You know? It's like, great. So he'd asked me earlier, do you want to switch? I'm like, no, nah, man, I'll follow you. It's okay, thank you. But I don't have anywhere to be in the morning. Um, so then Chappelle comes in, does that, he pops that back up. Attell, have you gone on yet? And he goes, no. He goes, okay, I'll go on right after you. And then I was like, that was cool of him, man, to like show you that respect or whatever. Because mm -hmm. he's allowed to just bump whoever, but he still looks at David Tell as like a master. Right. He goes, and you called it, I'm not gonna bump you. Yeah. Um, goes inside, goes to the back, looks at the lineup, and he goes, this is what I was told, who's Ari Shafir? Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, he's a comic here, he's new. And he goes, well, he's about to get fucked. <laughs> 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 so, so, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so then Dave Attell, yeah. after Chappelle goes downstairs and I don't see him doing that, Attell goes, you sure you don't want to switch now? And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that'd actually be great. I don't want right. to wait for eight hours. It could be eight hours right. for me to go up. Like yeah. literally that's not out of the realm of possibility. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I, sure, absolutely. So I go on. Um, I come off, Chappelle's there on the steps. And he's like, you're Ari? And I'm like, yeah. And he like, sees like a tail going on. He just goes, well played. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so cool. He's cool. He's he a really cool millionaire. Is. He really is. <laughs> really cool. Cool two people and just cool to be around. He's just yeah. like, he, he he is cool to coolness. people. He once uh, he once purposefully didn't bump me actually at the comedy store. Why? Which, just because he knew me. He's like I've seen you around. Yeah, he knows me, and uh, he goes, "I'll I'll go after Tony Hinchcliffe because he didn't know the names after me." Wow. But you know, wow. And he waited. He went to the back bar for forty five minutes to an hour, and then they can be cool. These bumpers. Yep. They they have it in them. One time with Griffin. Remember Eddie Griffin was tortured everybody right go on it the show started at nine o'clock yeah go on at nine and go till two yeah not a single comic got to so go on. 15 comedians were out of work that night yeah and nobody ever got called to stay at your party right it's not happening so anyway because we had no idea it might be on for an hour it might be on for seven right so one time i was hosting potluck the open mic employees and open and open micers and uh eddie griffin comes on and goes i'd like to go on next and i feel like no one had ever done this but maybe it's because I was an employee for so long and I was like, hey, Eddie, you can go on next, sure. Just so you know, these guys are all, this is all the employee section and they do their shifts, two to three shifts a week or more so they can get the three minutes. Um, and this is the only time they can go on. Would you mind, we got another 45 minutes of that. Would you mind just waiting until the end of that? And he goes, oh, okay, sure. 
it wasn't a big ask. Right. Just no one ever presents it to these people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the last one I saw that was the coolest too was Chris Rock when I was assistant talent coordinator mm -hmm. and Duncan was gone that week on vacation. So I became the de facto talent coordinator. Wow. Dave Mishevitz, Mishinowitz. Um, wow. I haven't thought about him in a decade and a half. Yeah. Wow. Me and O'Neill saw him in, uh, in Michigan. Ran he into him. Just ran into him? He came to a show. He lives out there now. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, wow. Mich points at him. Chris Rock coming in the back because I'm working the front. Uh, from booth at the at the at the uh, store of the main room, points at him. But he's wearing like a sweatsuit, and he's like kind of like got some beard hair. So I'm like, is this like a homeless guy? Is he like as my bouncer ability, not my talent coordinator ability? Like, get him, Dave Mishevitz. Wait, yeah, I couldn't tell what Mishevitz was saying. He's pointing at this guy coming right. across. Yeah, really, he had just said, "Hey, go tell Ari he's running the, you know, yeah, the lineup tonight." So I'm like, well, I'm like fucking homeless guy. So it's total racism on my part. And um, and he comes through the, and I close the curtain behind him, like balled up, ready to like kick this guy out. And mm -hmm. then it's like, oh, it's Chris Rock. It's far different than what I was expecting. Right. It's not not a homeless guy. It's also a legend. Right. And he goes, hey, can I go on next year? After Diaz? And I was like, oh. And I was like, uh, yeah, you can. But usually the the, the poppins go on in the in the original room. And he goes, yeah, I saw that, but like. Um, I saw Diaz as the last comic on this lineup and then they still have like five more in the OR. So I just figured. Right. Yep. Did an hour. Yep. At 155, he goes, I know the staff gets off soon, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Wow. And it's like, who could ever fault anyone for right. being. I wish right. they'd be more like that. What were you going to, you had one? Yeah. I saw a lot in my days as the cover booth guy you at the store. You did booth a lot, right? And, uh, you know, one of the more interesting ones is, uh, during my period of time wasn't so much the bumping because there wasn't that many celebrities coming in, but one person who did come in, God, excuse me, a barbecue, was Carlos Mencia. And he was coming in at a time where Bill Burr, again, still not anywhere near where he was about to be. This Again, this is between 12 and 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh... You know, it was a problem. So think about that. Like, not only were there not celebrities coming in, but the w celebrity that was popping in sometimes, literally other jokes. guys were like, I want you to flash so the blue light. Here's what people don't know. The blue light means it's time to get off. Like, right. like you, if a regular 15-minute set, right. you get it at 12. A 10-minute right. set, and you get it at 8. And on the left side of the, the stage, it's above the keyboard, there's a little blue star. And mm -hmm. every comedian knows where it is and that it's on. And oh, but, time to me to get, wrap yeah, it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or, and if there's no one there, they don't turn the light on. It's yeah. suddenly like, I have been on stage for like 30 minutes. Like, yeah, we have no other comics. That's the way to tell you when it is, is or not time to get off. Um, and we were worried about him coming in and stealing material. Mm -hmm. so go ahead. Yeah, so a whole system got set up. Bill Burr, I'm pretty sure. Because people wouldn't go on when he was around. Right. Like, if he's here, I can't go on. I, I like my material. And right. He's, he's not going to stop. So when Mencia would come in and check in and come to the cover booth because that's who you had to check in with hey you, hey can i come in can i pop in um so you would know and sometimes he would even come through that back door and just sit in a bucket seat and that was like oh shit there he is how long has he been here and you would signal to certain comedians that were in the know like bill was a big one and it was a, a, Get off a now. blinking blue star and you never oh, blinking so it was like on right, off on off on right off. And, like, you, and you got never it. got the bl that was that was that only meant one thing yeah and it might be four minutes to do a 15 minute set correct and he'd be like i know what that means thank, thank you, you so much that's my time yeah maybe it, you can it bring only meant count. one thing there were the blinking blue star there is no other explanation we had a code for it even if it was before the blinking got in that's a smart one yeah it was just like what should the code be i'm like just yell out he's here oh and i'll wrap God. up like we didn't have to we don't have to so make the crazy crowd. or we had early on met Edgar, we'd be like Ca -caw, Ca -caw. <laughs> like hey guys that's it for me <laughs> Ca Carlos. Yeah. Ca Carlos. As soon as he pulls in, it's like, let right. me get another comic up because I'm Yeah, done. what a weird time. Boy, you know, every once in a while, the comedy store historically sometimes makes really bad decisions. It is so interesting. Think about that one. And the same goes for their agents at the time. I think CAA or W or no. Yeah, it was CAA, I think. No. Um, no, it was they, not. Uh, no, it was it was, yep, yep. They picked the wrong one too. They picked Carlos over Joe. The store picked Carlos. Over. They should have picked like any comedian on social media when mm -hmm. another comedian does something wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Silence. They should right. have picked silence. Yeah. That's between you guys. We're not getting involved as a policy. Yep. That's what Mitzi would do. Yep. I'm not getting involved. Go beat each other up and figure it out. Right. I'm not gonna be the one to know whose joke it was first. Right. Go beat each other up. Yep. You know, you guys will police yourselves. Yeah. It's a mistake for her to get involved. Yep. She was smart on that end. Wild how that lady had so much figured out. What a brain on her. Jeez. A, a lunatic tyrant and a really intelligent like woman at the same time. And the style. I mean, look at all these fucking clubs trying to do this and exactly that, that, and yeah. instead just black leather, red neon, fucking sh- couple room. chandeliers. Well, this looks gross. I'm like, yeah, the the, yep. the the rooms go off. Yep, it's all about the. She made it so that the show was cool. <sighs> that was so crazy. There was nothing for us to do, other than like, okay, I'm getting off. Mm-hmm. I heard he used to sit at open mic nights with a notebook and just like sit there, like. Yep. He saw it as freeing these premises from these people who didn't know how to handle them. Yeah. And yeah, he knows how to do... He knows... He Yeah, he does. That one stupid Mexican lady that he makes it better. She actually, you know, yeah. I get it. Yeah, you're right. You're not involved in that. You don't see the hurt of this. Right. Just like you don't see Amazon. You're like, what's the difference? Right. Like, they yeah. don't pay their employees well. They don't give them breaks. They kill mom and pops. Like, I don't know, man. This shit's coming to my door. Right. Like, you're not wrong to not... Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I, yeah, I paid three dollars for this shower curtain. I don't care who made it. Fuck it, it's me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But man, what a what a what a what a what an interesting fucking. It was a crazy time. I, my favorite time. It was yeah. the most wild. Oh yeah, man. Me too, dude. Pre it pre was um, all. I wasn't responsible for anybody else's career. You, you fucking know what I mean? in the like, room with some woman who's there, uh, uh, just uh, there on a night, and then fucking in the store. And I'm a door guy. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like she saw me on stage. Right. It's <laughs> like talk. The right. wildest people showed up to that. Yep. One time, a lady made me come in my pants. I was a 22 year old door guy. This hot Latina chick. I mean, thick and giant tits, wearing a hot black dress, and like her giant fucking tits are just like old school cleavage yeah and i'm a 22 year old scrawny fucking a scrub n- no one should fuck you nothing burger door guy i right. mean i'm wearing two pairs of pants because it's freezing cold outside <laughs> none of my clothes fit me you know what i mean no yeah. style whatsoever a fucking do nothing dork who's sitting around quietly and uh she came out to the back door. I was working the back door that night. Yeah. She's like, "Hey, what's up?" Ba 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 ba. I'm like, like, "What do you mean, what's up?" Yeah, I what? know. I'm like, I and and I I just like, I got lucky by even the words that I was because I didn't even know how to talk. I don't know. How to, I didn't know how to talk to anybody then. So I just like right. happened to say the right things. Oh, not much. What's up with you? Like, Whoop! Well, I got it. Okay, not much. I'm watching the show. This seems like a cool building. Yeah, you want to see more of it? <gasps> Yeah, I love yeah, it. You, I would. you just nailed it. Like I, it was a perfect I, I game. I can't believe That's it. The I, yeah, shot. I can't believe you know, it. I can't like, believe it. Oh my god! Oh my it god! All came together. I mean, I made six in a row. <laughs> Holy shit! And she goes, yeah. And we went to the main room, green room. That and game when Manu Ball hits like seven threes. And yeah. Charles Buck is like, I'm not even going to encourage you. Go ahead, do another yeah. one. Yeah, so I showed her the main room, green room. Ooh. And she's like, oh, this is so cool. These leather couches. Why don't you sit down? What? And I sat down. She grinded on me. We're making out. And she's just grinding. So I came in my pants. Wow. I remember I went back to the parking lot where Matt Edgar had covered the door. I'm like, Matt, cover the door for a few minutes. You know what I mean? One of those. Uh-huh. I and I like, swear what? to God, ask Matt about this next time you see him. There's no way he forgot this because <laughs> yeah. I go, I, I go back to him. She goes back to her seat in the original room. I go up to him. I go, Hey Matt, you see that right there? And my black pants and there's this patch. I go, guess what that is, buddy? That's cum. <laughs> <laughs> and we're laughing anyway uh, <laughs> about, uh, about, uh, 45 minutes to an hour later. Matt comes up to me again. He goes, Hey dude, did you go see that girl in the room? I go, no. He goes, go look at it. Go look at her. And I go back in the room. She's sitting there watching the show. I see her. Then as I walk more, I see that she's with this gigantic, muscular, tattooed cartel looking fucking. Oh my gangster. God. So blatantly a gangster, not a fake gangster, oh my God. Like, a real badass it. motherfucker. Yep. Yep. What? And this, so now there I am, this scrawny 22 year old door guy in way over my head, like basically hiding out. But, you know, it was cool. She was cool. 
Very cool. Everybody was cool. She sounds like one of the coolest people in history. Yeah, I have no idea what happened or where she's from, what her name was, anything. But wow. she'll forever be known as the uh, hot, thick Mexican chick that made me come in my pants oh my when I was God. 22. Oh, my God. I remember where I was when I showed Matt Edgar the spot. I'm like, look at that. That's come, dude. <laughs> he's dying. We're just living our lives. Both of us, 22, 23. You take I these mean, dweebs you throw them into the wildest place. And remember? Kevin Rook. He, oh he's my, my example. God, he, I do. He didn't last very long. He was oh, a lawyer from wow. Arkansas, yep. Christian, and he had a dream of being a comic. Got yeah. passed. Yeah, nerdy white guy. Nerdy white guy. And then he's around like all these, like, like Jamar neighbors and him should never come in contact, you right. know? But like they do. Yep. And a, a former Orthodox Jew yep. and, a, and a, you know, a degenerate this and a, yep. you know? And a white trash Italian kid yeah, from Youngstown. Yeah, and they're all just together. In this place, and like, the, what the fuck yeah. is this world? Matt Edgar, the son of a fucking congressman or whatever. Like, what? Yeah. What? It's real training to become a, a real comic. This is the yes. degeneracy level. You're like, okay, now I've seen all sorts yeah. of the world, all yep. sides of the world. Yep. And different levels. And you get to see the heckler instead of being on stage and seeing it. You're the one that has to kick it out. Dude, you know we what went I mean? to go spy on Eddie Griffin having sex in the back. And it was me. I don't know who else it was. Me, David Taylor, and Hart. And he was back there. He took a girl back there. So we're like, sweet. That sounds like such a crew to go watch somebody <laughs> fuck without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. It might have been Freddie also, Freddie Lockhart. I'm not sure. There was somebody else. But we're like, let's go spy on him. Let's go see him fucking. Oh, by the way, we're supposed to be working. We're all on the clock, right. but no one's there. And those are all the posts of the store. That's the back security, the front. Somebody just pulled out a machine gun. A very serious machine gun. Damn, that's a kill machine. Yeah. So go ahead. <laughs> um, what the fuck was I oh, saying? Heart, all those people supposed to be working. Oh yeah, I'm saying that, that back then that is everything. So that is in charge of the front, the back. So literally, and if the, that many drinks, if, if yeah, <laughs> our hearts the bartender. So if that many guys are gone, that means the place is fully exposed. Anybody can come. I wonder what that is. We should Jesus. we should ask. I wonder what that is. That'd be cool to find out what that is. Yeah. Then you could put a picture of it up. Because, like, the fact that that gun is that loud. Because there's guns. You what guys, the, fuck is the that? listener, the wa viewers of this might not know, but we're at an extremely uh, busy, gun developed range. gun range. Like, this is a hot spot. There's a whole ton of things underneath us. This is just the VIP section. Mm. That we're at, yeah. This oh, is really? the, yeah. This is a closed oh, wing of. Does it seem way well put together, well to right. do people? Yeah, all those VIP cars section. in the parking lot are all downstairs right. chaff. Yep. steerage people from yep to Titanic. Yep, the peasants, the peasants with guns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they so, don't watch this. We were all like, "How can we spy him?" So you, we don't know where he is in the room. We just know it went in there. So he might be in the the heart of the main room. Mm -hmm. So we had to go. We had to peer in through that back service entry door. And we peered in like Scooby-Doo, like one head over the other. That's <laughs> okay. He's like, okay, we don't see him. Now he could be in the girl's bathroom there. Could be in the boy's bathroom. So we had to like, like clear each one, like fucking tactical training. It's not. So it's gotta be, it's gotta be the green room or the main room. And then we go back there quietly. He's in there. We can hear him. Mm -hmm. And we're like, we want to be sure that he's what fucking What do you hear? Mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. shit. Okay. You know, which is movement. Yeah. And we're like, how do we get back in there? Because now it's like that door opens. He's going to be right there. Right. Can't figure out a way. And we're like, what should we do? And then Taylor figures it out. We go in, obviously. So Taylor's walk. I don't want to creak the door open. I want to go in like I'm looking for something. Like I'm like, hey, I got to go. Oh, my, you know, right. Like he's just barging in, Smart. not even knowing. Smart. So he does that and he opens the door and comes in and goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Sees full fucking. Right. Sees like penetration. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and he goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And then, um, and then backed up whatever, and he was like, told us about it. Then we're in the parking lot. Forty minutes later, an hour later, and Eddie's like, "Did you get a good look?" And he goes, "Oh man, I, I'm I'm really sorry. I didn't know anybody was in there." He goes, "You did." <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "You did. It's cool. She was hot though, huh?" And then David like he had to drop the pretense and he goes, "Yeah, dude, she was pretty hot." He goes, "Right." <laughs> <laughs> He's almost like, I don't care about you walking. It was cool. I got to show it off. <laughs> Such a fucking fun house, man. You remember the time that uh, 
me, you, and someone else found out that we were triple Eskimo brothers because we found out that we I hooked up with the story. same girl on the same night. I just told the story because I just hung out with Chris. Yeah. With a Chris Black manager. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had the, the tape. <laughs> so I just he told, still has the tape? No, I asked oh. him. I was like, did you record? He goes, it's on this. It's over. <laughs> right. They recorded over it. That's hilarious. To find out, to mock, do mock, just because I just talked about this on, on the Chappelle movie episode, but like to mock Tripoli for ha ha, you got my leftovers, and then you coming in later going, wait, what day was that? <laughs> yeah, like, I was with her at 10.30 that like, What night. time was you? I'm like, uh, 11.45. You're like, ooh, I got some bad news. <laughs> like, you're going to feel bad. You were feeling good, you're going to feel bad. And Tripoli, you're going to feel worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the best part of that, that you might not remember is later the next day i think mm -hmm. um the next night a movie star she was going out with a movie star she was pretty oh yeah and um from like major major movies and tv mm -hmm. goes and we knew she was going out and like that's cool mm -hmm. tweeted like hung out with the best kisser <laughs> <laughs> like, you have no idea oh fuck man there's nothing funnier than that who's the one what at what's the madonia big dick contest you ever have that one yes that i mean wild nights that's the kind of laughter i saw grown men laughing that night like i've never seen them laugh before i'll never Which forget night? the night that you and damn madonia the big dick contest. yeah in fact, I'll get the Gramercy, February 8th, storytelling show, surprise lineup. It's going to be great. It's going to be one of those lineups you were talking about. Um, maybe I'll tell that story for that, but go ahead. Yeah. Say anything. I, mean, I, I mean, won't. You know, there was a fucking, I mean, should I tell the story? I'll tell it all. It's fine. I won't tell, I'll right. tell it different one. Normal night at the comedy store, but this is during the era of late night fucking Anything Don goes. Barris just running the house between the hours of one thirty and of five. Most underrated, biggest influence on comics yep. in LA, at least from the comedy store. Without a doubt, uh, the ability to say harsh things with a smile, yep. uh, to be natural, and to get everyone involved, saying terrible things, but them knowing they don't mean it. The, my, my image that comes through is a, a grandmother that's there. It's like, oh, you dirty little slut. Yeah, and, and her loving it. Yep, her Reading laughing. The room, everybody laughing and on paper it's way out of line yep. but in real life he nails it yep yep so he's in his normal time slot there's some girl outside that like word is is that there's some girl being like slutty like dancing or something like that on yeah. people's laps or something like that and Tripoli's out there and then I can't remember exactly how it started but I think I think she said do you maybe you know it better but I think she said that she gives the best blowjobs or something like that. And and yeah, so Tripoli comes in with this girl and I think Don sort of coordinated it, right? Like Ari, Dan, which one of you guys thinks? No. Yeah. It was, okay, which one of you thinks what? It was Dan Which one of you another, guys thinks you guy. guys have the biggest? Dan and another guy. Oh. And then that guy goes, no, I'm not doing this. Right. I think it was the guy she was with. He goes, I'm right. not doing this. Which right. one of you guys? Right. And back then, Dan, by the way, was a little another young buck door guy that was just a slut. He would hook slut. up with anybody. God he, damn it, he pulled. He really did. He took it down. And people are like, he exaggerates. I'm like, even if it's like, uh, that's like saying Barry Bonds wouldn't hit all right. his homes, but he hit a right. few hundred. I saw him do a lot of what. Yeah. take down big game yeah and, and i was a couple years older than him at the time and like even i was just like god damn also it, poor scrawny yeah, yeah. look like a fucking like he should have a hookah shell necklace he just knew how to talk to women he really did yeah so he was already you know balling out of control and so he had a confidence about him so he was happy and excited to get his dick sucked on stage and then you said so so right. the guy was like i i'll just break in for mm -hmm. facts so the guy it was like I can't do this. I'm sick because it's all already very interesting. We've got a porn star on stage. Yep. Um, a guy, Don Barris, emceeing it. Tripoli on the piano, mic. Well, or he went to no. It. I was actually on the piano mic because I was doing lights and sound. Okay. Um, I remember Flipping very lights, clearly. Fun shit. Yeah. Okay. And so, what's interesting because it's funny you mention that because it is an epic moment is that Tripoli was side stage with a microphone which is oh, very rare okay. for Don as much as he shared to the room control. to 
to let someone else have a microphone who's also a late night comedian. But here's the brilliance of Don is he knew that chaos was about to happen. And he's like, they can't ban both of us is wow. what that's his genius. So I'm sitting at the window seat mm -hmm. in the booth closest to the window mm -hmm. because I'm like, this is already amazing. It's a moment. You instantly go back and forth between comedian and an audience member. Mm -hmm. At any moment, like this is happening, I'm watching. Then you might get called on. Now I'm performing. Mm -hmm. You know, like we were talking about that little Esther moment when she got that. It was like I'm yep. an audience member for this. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the next day I'm, I'm a performer. Or the next minute I'm a performer. Right. So I'm sitting there on the side, like this is awesome. I want to get a front seat. And they're like, this guy pulled out. And goes, I'm not doing it. And then Don goes. Well, will someone else join in the big day contest with Dan? And I felt like the entire room just looked at me mm -hmm. like it's obviously going to be you. Right. You're the one who has no yeah, boundaries. You pull out your dick and balls and sure. butthole all yeah. the time. And it was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're up there. He's up there. Somehow your guys' pants are dropped, right? It's, it's, it's also set the scene. 20 comedians yeah. and about three real audience members. 100%. Who didn't it's know. It's exactly how I remember it. Never. You talk about that show, Segura, uh, Shane, Norman, right. you, and, and me and Rogan. This was a way wilder show if you're an audience member. Oh, yeah. This it's is like nothing. Unbelievable. It's a way wilder show even if you're a comedian. Yeah. yeah Again, I mean, I've never heard laughter like what was happening in this room. Uh, yeah. I remember Earl uh, pointing. Uh, it was, a, it was a sound I've never heard him make. And I've watched Earl laugh for fucking a decade and a half, but I've never seen him. Ah, ah, ah. He was pointing. <laughs> he was pointing like that. And Huck, Huck was at this point, the, the Thai bartender is on the rail, the front seat. He was on the front stoop. PJ was in the middle trying to videotape it with some old flip phone. Oh, and yeah. Huck, is, Huck is on the corner closest like, PJ, to me. PJ, turn that fucking off. Yeah, yeah. You're ruining it. Of course. It's a live moment. Of course, PJ would figure out a way to need like ruining it in there but we we got rid of it you know triple e embarrassed double hosting they're not gonna let pj ruin it so um, and but why it was so funny she's going back and forth sucking no your no, no, no 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 okay. no no hold okay. on let me yeah. just details right. the details right 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 um she goes i'll judge who has a bigger dick yeah. and we're like should we get should we get a i'm up there like should we get a, a like a, a measuring tape in the back or like right. a ruler or something and she goes, I'll measure. We're like, well, how are you going to measure? She goes, I'll measure with my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Just like on her own. I'll yep. measure with my mouth. So at this point, you have to picture like the hosts of I this. I lost my virginity at 23 years old and right. I'm not in my 30s yet. Right. So it's a wild jump to where yeah. I am at this moment. And you know, when a normal human, the porn star in this instance, says something like that, I'll measure with my mouth. The hosts of the evening right at that moment, Barris and Tripoli are dead. I mean, they're dying of laughter because it's such a natural fucking, there's nothing funnier than when a non-comedian who's not even really trying to be funny. She wasn't trying to be funny there. She was literally being serious. I'll measure with my mouth. She's weighing on her mouth question. A math question, not a math question. So now both of these guys who are responsible for what's happening this evening yeah. in control ha are, it's like if two pilots fucking just went to the back of the plane for a second. You know what I mean? Because they're gone uh -huh. for a minute now because that moment We're in itself gone. is so funny. They're dying of laughter. They're literally done. They're with seeing and also being audience members at the right, same time. Exactly. Because like, that was hilarious. I just got to see that. Oh hear my that. God. Oh my God. Nothing makes Don laugh like that. The natural fucking regular human. Yeah. Almost impossible to make him laugh if he knows you're a comedian and he knows how funny you are. Um, he's a tough laugh. There's a few guys Don, like that. Yeah. And what a rewarding laugh. Yeah. When you get one from him, it feels like <laughs> yeah. it feels like your mom tucked you in. Yeah. As a comedian, it's like that's thing. one of those laughs like fucking earn yeah. that one. Mm-hmm. And so she says she'll measure with her mouth. You and Madonia against the back curtain of I'm the original on, room. Uh, stage left. I don't know which one stage left is, but if you're facing the stage, I'm on the right. He's yep. on the left. We yep. sit in chairs. Mm -hmm. No. Were you? I, I believe I think we were you sitting were in chairs. Standing. I thought she was kneeling in front of us on chairs. I think she was on her knees going back and forth. You guys standing and neither one of you. Can I get there now? Yes. Neither one of these guys could get hard at all. I mean, I went from a, a, like a little <laughs> mushroom to like a slightly bigger mushroom. 
<laughs> very slightly because what was funny about it and I, I think i think we may have jumped the gun by talking about earl's laugh and everybody's laugh like yeah. the sound because this is where it started <laughs> because the fact that you guys couldn't get hard and just these flaccid i mean they were just completely soft because also it's the, it was like gym soft like gym oh yeah right. out of the pool soft yep Yep, and it's, it's such a comical moment. You need to be sick. This is why I've never gotten hard at strip clubs. I'm like, I'm around my buddy friends. So it's hard to yeah. like focus on this right. girl, yeah, and ignore your friends. Like, doo -doo, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, this is, is the biggest this is like killer. that times a thousand, right? You're literally looking at your peers, yeah, who do <laughs> and you know the situation. How you're seeing three regular audience members from fucking Tucson or something, you know, <laughs> going like, what? Oh my god! And 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 then also, so that's why I thought Tripoli was on the uh, piano mic because I could yeah. hear him doing play by play and right. Ari pulls the deck out right. and the mouth yeah. goes in and the mouth yeah. comes out and yeah. it goes back in and it goes back out. Yep. So I'm hearing this retarded fucking shit yep. and I'm like dying laughing and yep. the bone, it's just not coming. And her head is moving back and forth at an extremely fast rate of speed. Like she really is professional trying her hardest to measure your dicks with her mouth. <laughs> She's getting absolutely nothing. <laughs> Madonia can't get hard. You Wait. can't get hard. So the fact that they're not getting hard is what makes it so funny. This chick's trying so hard. Huge detail left out. Yeah. She blows me for a while. Right. I get like, I said, told you 10, 12% harder than I was. Yeah. Get tops. Yeah. Then it's like, all right. She's like, mm, <laughs> yeah, about right. You know, she she like marks up on her fucking herpes in the mouth. Yeah. Of that one. You can try. Yeah. And then goes to Dan. And before Dan starts, he just gives her a long kiss. No. He starts going, mm. Oh, God. And we're all like, oh. <laughs> like he had forgotten what just happened. She just, it wasn't like she fucking mouthwashed in between my, and we're like, Jesus, Dan. And these are, you, the moment he goes, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of those little moments that I forget amongst the continuous chaos of that. There's, it's such a, there were so many beats of laughter. Yeah. In the cast, you know, just the crazy crew at the time. Oh who, my God. I mean. So. Yeah. Where else are you gonna go with the story? Well, it goes on and on. She keeps trying forever. Didn't she go back to you and then back to him and then back uh -huh. to you, yep, right? She she's like she goes, trying, cause be she's sure. like, I could do better. Let me try them A first, I right. them B. Yep. Um, I'm not going to say what she said because uh -huh. this will come into play afterwards. I'm for sure not going to do the story on February 8th of the Gramercy. Um, tickets are already .com. But um, she goes, uh, she goes, um, okay, so next day, mm -hmm. right? I get a call from Tommy, the talent oh, lawyer, the guy in charge. No. <laughs> You're on stage? <laughs> Your fucking dicks are out? I, 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 and this lady's blowing you on stage on a fucking professional business. And I'm like, oh, first I'm like, how'd you find out about that? Right. <laughs> you, know, you weren't there. Yeah. But then it's like, it didn't matter. He, he got me. And he mm -hmm. goes, this is bad. Mm -hmm. Like one of those, I'm like, oh, maybe we did cross an, an even comedy store line. Right. And, and a rule book that's written in pencil. We might have crossed that one. Yeah. We might have crossed into the pen area and gone, oh shit. And he goes, this is bad. Like, this is not, you can't just move past this. Right. I can't just tell you, can't do that again. Yeah. So the punishments had to come down and they talked about it. And it was Madonia got banned for two weeks. He was yep. not a paid regular at the time and I was. I think he was a non-paid or maybe not nothing. He's, right, he was an employee. That, and, I, that's and I was it. a paid regular. Yeah. Doesn't mean anyone's like higher status in reality. I just right. been there longer, whatever. Yeah. Um, he got banned for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do his shifts, couldn't do his spots for two right. weeks. I got um, no ban, but a stern warning. Yep. And then people, I remember going like, well, wait, the act is the act. So what, because Ari's a paid regular, somehow what he did mm -hmm. wasn't as bad as, as Dan. Why well, was Dan punished and Ari wasn't? Right. And the reason that Dan was punished and I wasn't was because I won the big dick contest. Yay. <laughs> and there was no punishment for Tripoli or Don who were actually responsible for everything. <laughs> the whole that thing happened. they set it all in motion. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a stern warning because you couldn't do anything. I mean, literally they controlled late night at the they time. It's, it. it's really even before Brody, you know, came Joined in up. as yeah. one of the real late night guys. Yeah, It was just Don and Tripoli. So like they could do nothing. They weren't just gonna have unfunny ends of shows for a couple weeks. That was one of those things too, it was like, it's over. Yeah. There's nobody on afterwards. Right. That was the closer. Yep. 
God damn, that was fun. Oh my God. And so when all these people talk about what Eleanor and Rick called the credit store, like the era of Spade, Ron White, Rogan, the Silverman, all these lineups, crazy good lineups. Right. Um, and he's like, that's the best era. And I di I'm a disagree. Right. I think our, There's when you got no there, doubt. when we, I got we back. Made, we made a, we built a pathway for all that to happen. Yeah. There's no question about it. It became it, Don, a it's funny. cool place to be. It became a fun place to be. Even when I got there in 2007, it was sad and sappy. There was a bunch of angry left Messiah 40, stuff. 40, 50 year old door guys uh, that sort of sucked. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, yeah, know. and, um, you know, a lot of those people don't even do stand up anymore. So, uh, I want to make a list of all the people that they told, hey, watch out for this person in the alt scene. Like, they're going to be great. Who were and who booked all the premium blends, all oh, the way yeah. up, who are now not even in comedy. Right. And Re now I'm talking about who went on to be good writers or something like that. Yeah. I mean, like, just not part of the industry. In Real any way. estate agents. Yeah. Yep. And I had to be like, oh, I guess so. Yeah. I'm working hard. Yep. That's why Ed Brooke was the best. He came into this, like, what I call like a gold rush. Mm hmm. He just came to hang at this comedy store and everybody was like, no, you don't go to the comedy store. He's an agent. And it was like, don't go to the comedy store. It's worthless. And then he went in there and he was like, I had a great time. Yeah. I've been to the improv a bunch like you guys and this is way cooler. Right. And then they're like, don't go there. And he just goes, I think you're wrong. Yeah. And it's like when people tell him don't invest in Bitcoin, he goes, I'm going to get a little. And he just signed Diaz, yep. Brett, Dove, yep. me, mm -hmm. Renazizi. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, I was with him for a while. Yeah, yep. and just like, just like mind it off clean of all the fucking underdeveloped. Brendan Zizi was oh, at yeah. the year two of the league yeah. and had no agent sending him on the road. Oh my God. And you're like, we were losers. Bobby was the only one. Right. Bobby Lee was the only one doing anything. Right. And we were fine with it. Because what a blast. Wow. It's funny to think how those execs at the time overlooked all that. Uh huh. Because they that can't was think happening, the and they came in so late to the party. Uh huh. They came in. <clears throat> they came in to buy up roast battle after it was. It never got cooler. Yeah. They immediately ruined it. Immediately ruined it. Took out. Said, Let's change some stuff. Yep. 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 Let's change the set. Let's Even change the. Even the way they the shot this. it, I was we're gonna, one of the We're going to make it big. We're going to make it for TV. One of the Montreal teams are like, okay, we're going to go. What what would be a commercial break? Which means you can go stop. Come right back, mm -hmm. you know, because you'll just put the commercial in or you can stop for 40 minutes. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. You're putting in three minutes of commercials. Mm -hmm. Check. That's not their fault. You know, it's outdated now, but that's not their fault. But I'm like, during that time, they just kind of like sat still and nobody said a word. And I'm like, send the wave up there. We're right. still an audience. Yep. Keep us into it. Yep. God, they were fucking dumb. So stupid. They would tell me, like, I don't have to edit. This is not happening. They're like, just show someone how to do it. And it's fine. I'm like, are you crazy? Like. That's the reason it's good. I'm a comedian saying what can go and what can stay. Right. And With, they're like, you don't have to be there. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. Yep. So dumb. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, what an interesting thing. It's like if they steered into the iceberg, you know? It's like. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, wow, you had all that space. You could and just do anything. And we thought they knew, too. When we were coming up, like, they must know. They're I professionals. I know. They must have Comedy Central. It's the only channel. That was it. It was them against sort of HBO, but not really. It was, it was Comedy Central first. That was it. For yep. comedy. Yep. And they it. blew it. And now look at it, man. You ever see it? It's office reruns, Friends, Jimmy Kimmel. It's over. It's already I mean, over. What the fuck? I'm not even happy about it. It yeah, still bothers no, me because I'm like, it no, was a good platform for comedians. Absolutely. Just because they wrong me doesn't mean like other people are like, you get some. It should be great. They should be running exactly what worked for them forever. Fucking comedians doing eight minute sets. You know, you know Ron White got huge off of it was eight minutes. That On thing that we Yeah, that thing that we think is like a half hour special yeah. never was. Wow. And he had it. He had time. So he got to go do the road and fucking decimate. With they were always like, this is what they didn't understand too. They're like, so-and-so has a good story about you used to be homeless. And I was like, oh, I'll try to get her to do it. And they're like, yeah, just book her for tomorrow. I'm like, oh no, dude, it, it, it takes some, it's not just that she has the details. Right. Like you look at the machine, like he had to learn how to say all the, the right timing. Oh and like, yeah. It's not just like, well, here's the story. Right. I mean, his teacher was not going to tell that story the same way Burke Kreischer would. Right. Over time developing it. it, it, it whatever. Yeah. It's just wild to think how low they uh you know what they went wrong and same way hbo's gone wrong went wrong before them 
and I see Netflix doing it too now. Mm -hmm. They're going deep into celebrity. People say it's the woke thing. It's not that. It's they're like, oh, they're big. Book them instead of we'll show you who should be big. When Tom Segura mm -hmm. launched off Netflix, nobody mm -hmm. knew who the fuck he was. Yep. When Ali Wong launched off Netflix, nobody fucking knew who she was. Yep. You put on quality people, and people start tuning in Netflix for whatever. And now it's like, well, here's a celebrity. And you're like, well, that. Okay, that was no good, but I'll watch the next one. Another celebrity, another celebrity, another celebrity. They don't work hard. You I could not be more right. Out of everything that we've talked about on this fucking podcast, you are most right about this thing. I saw it. I watched the evolution of it. I was a big part of it. I wrote, you know, whatever the last 10 Comedy Central roasts, the writers of the roast before I wrote on it were Whitney Cummings. They right. were Anthony Jeselnik. And You're then right. when I got in, they were on it. No one knew who Jeselnik was. No, they launched no off that. Schumer, one Whitney, knew who Whitney Natasha, was. They all no kind of one knew off who that. Schumer was. No one knew who Natasha was. Nobody knew. And then they stopped doing that no as soon as I started were. writing for it, which wow. my whole plan obviously was I'm going to fucking write all, I'm going to write all the best jokes so that they know. I'm going to make sure that they all you know. me next year. I'm the guy, yeah. so let's go. And that's who they used to have, Geraldo. He wasn't he was a known comic, but only to the comedy world. Right. And you'd crush on those. And my point is I got to literally watch them with a little bit of bitter bones behind it because I'm like, you fucking idiots, I'm right here. Yeah. I'm right here and I have an hour and I'm in the middle of the lineups at the store. I'm like in shape. Yeah. I'm your I'm your boy. Let's fucking go. And, and they wouldn't literally, do they're like Eli Sayers wouldn't even give him a writing job on there because they're like, ah, you're really a nobody. I'm like, I won the intercontinental <laughs> right. roast battle shit. Like, you won't let me write for you guys? Are you nuts? But they literally would just schmooze these fucking people, celebrities, right? God and, damn it! Oh, we got David Spade. Oh, we got. Is he gonna try? Right. No. Nothing more. I'll tell what you he's going to do is he's going to read right off the teleprompter right. things that me and other talented Sarah Tiana was ready to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? A Southern I, I fucking get, get bell. I get comic if they're going to try hard. real comedian yeah, Tiana, with a real it. Southern delivery. A real female. Meanwhile, they they had to construct Amy Schumer like she was in a laboratory. And, and, and they put on celebrities that weren't even real celebrities like the chick from Grey's Anatomy. Right. And you're like, dude, no one's tuning in for this. So you have no talent level and you're not getting, if you got Barack Obama, like, okay, that's people will tune in for this. And you know you're what? You're getting a, a, a barely not nobody. And I, and I ended up seeing from beginning to end, they would go, they would go, it would start as, hey, what do you guys think about the girl from Grey's Anatomy, right? Ba 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 Cut to her, cut to the after party. Yeah. And then you see these execs going up, hey, I just want to let you know, I really love you on Grey's Anatomy. I really, it all was for their yeah. own fucking schmooze and moment and them. It was yeah. them. It was them all along. They were responsible for everything and it was all about fame from the booking all the way down. And then by the end, mm -hmm. by the end of the fucking roast, the Alec Baldwin roast, for example, yeah. which I do believe ironically is the last roast to happen three years ago. Oh, we did damn. that. Yeah. And um, which is a real shame because it'd be better now today. It's a fun one. Same one for Charlie Sheen. We found out he had AIDS after that. Can you fucking imagine? Yeah. But he anyway, had AIDS for sure. They made a deal with Alec Baldwin and like, it's so crazy because me and Mike Lawrence literally right before the he Baldwin. killer roaster. Yep. Right before the Still Baldwin is. roast, they wanted us to do season three of Roast Battle so bad. They're like, we want Hinchcliffe versus Lawrence, the likable autistic boy with glasses and a beard and a chubby head, or super likable heel. guy against the fucking super villain with his hands behind his back, just fucking overconfident. They wanted to watch me get blown off the fucking stage by this guy. And we literally go. I'm like, Mike, don't say yes. Let's play it right. Let's do winner gets on the next roast. Winner gets on the next roast. It's going to be stakes to it. They're going to love this idea. They're, it's going to it's benefit like, them. It's going to make yeah. this roast battle mean something. It all meant nothing. And do you ever see the backstory of on UFCs when they like two, three at UFCs out they're like, hey, here's a guy grew up in Mexico and he's trained when he was little and then you start like rooting for him like I don't know who this guy is. And by the way, he's a number eight contender, you know. But then by the time you see it in a month from now, you're like, oh, that's the guy. Yeah. I'm rooting for him. And now you know there's so now a when fucking the roast story. Happened, you're like, this is the guy from before. We rooting for him. This is the fucking. I mean, it's common. Common. Sense. Sense. Common sense. We wrote it out for them. God and meanwhile, damn. they go, nah, 
nah. we can't promise you that. Because, right. Like, we can't well, do why? it. Why not just do it? And you want to know why they couldn't do it? Why? Because they, they started towards the end. They started promising whoever they booked for the roast that they get to book the roast. They gave them the fucking power. So uh, Alec Baldwin got to, to decide was like, who right. was on so he's his like, roast. He's my buddy from when I was little, and like, yeah, this is Dom Irera. This is my favorite comedian. We're good friends. This is uh, who I love. I'm yeah, glad Dom, Dom got it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, uh, but it's, it's you want not, a roast guy? Like you know, we this were saying they used to get to decide mm-hmm. who was a star. Mm-hmm. That was the excitement of being an executive. Instead of hanging out with the lady from Grey's Anatomy that they're actually a fan of that night, they got to fucking build something mm-hmm. and then run into me on the street now and go, "We fucking did it. Yeah. Ryan's you was did still that like for that. me. I made you look good. You made me look good." And Ryan was still like that. He was like, "I just like making good stuff." But the yeah. rest of them, he was like climbing uphill. Yeah, they yeah. didn't do that with stories. Also, they're like, "What about Hannibal?" Love Hannibal. Mm-hmm. But like, I was like, oh, he's, because he was the cool like celebrity that you mm-hmm. get. I'm like, he, he doesn't like these stories. He doesn't do, like, just because he's a great comic doesn't mean you can do right. this. Right. You know, and just because you're a great comic doesn't mean you can do roast. Those are different right. forms. And so um, I was like, oh, he doesn't like doing it. And he and he wasn't good at it. Like he did it once in Montreal and it just didn't go anywhere. Right. And he made one good joke of like, do they have any seminars during the day about how to do good stories? <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm like, he doesn't like it. And he's not good at it. And they're like, but maybe he could just do it. I'm like, you got to shut up. Right. Yeah. I, I just told you why it wouldn't work. Yeah. They get set in their ways. Yeah. It doesn't work in any other field. You can't do that with sports. You can't be like, ah, oh, he's a quarterback. Yeah, but make him the wide receiver for this one. I want him to be the wide receiver. No coach. Because it's common fucking sense. Yeah. Oh, I don't want a guy who's not good at stories to do a story. Right. Why would you do that? Why, why, why would you what, put a guy that throws a football in the catching like, position? Because well, we, we get to say we booked him. And that's what Netflix right. is doing now. We look at oh, who yeah. we have on. And oh. then you're like, and by the way, and they're also winning like uh, Grammys and, and, and fucking yep. uh, Emmys for best specials. And you're like, oh, well, they're terrible. Oh, yeah. The, the worst. The worst. Unacceptable. Yeah. I mean, you do have some 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 celebrities who still care, like like a Burr and Louis and, and Chappelle. Yeah. It's like they're putting out their best. Yeah. But they're, it's not like they're all, but it's like, God, the, the casual watchers like doesn't care what if they were on Grey's Anatomy. They're putting out fucking dog shit, dog man. Shit. I don't know oh my what's God, going on. Dog shit. Mm. Some good ones, but a lot of dog shit. Dog shit, dude. Fucking hot diggity. It's wild to see because I'll see fucking. I'll. I don't ever watch specials mm. ever because it just obviously infuriates me. Yeah. Um, like, but I one? will like graze over things. I don't want to name any names or anything, but like I will watch a new, say HBO special that came out mm-hmm. just to see because I'm like, wow, this you is play the, the second, game. How long can I make the it? Second one they gave this guy. He <laughs> seems like a straight white male. <laughs> I don't really know him. I'm from LA <laughs> slash Texas. That's what furious right? people too. You've all, everyone at home has heard like, oh, it's tough to be a straight white male. They're not looking for you now, whatever. And it's like, it, that bothers the straight white males. It bothers when like, oh, I have a talented friend and he can't get seen. That's what I'm saying. For, for nothing to do with him. <laughs> right. For stuff that we're, we've all moved past as a society. And now right. we're devolving back into like, well, let me see, what does your penis go into? Another, another yeah. a vagina or an ass? Yep, uh, and I'm like, well, that was have to do with my joke about traffic, right? But they they like devolving. But anyway, weirdest shit ever. Yeah, but then does when your they, penis when they book, go into a mm-hmm. butt butt of a man or a vagina of a woman? Or oh, sorry, we can't work with you. Yeah, and so and so, do you scissor or fuck? Right. Like, what? So so um, who was your father? Like what? But like yeah. so when they have like the new faces or something like that, and it's twenty people, and they're like six trans people and one straight white male. Yep. It's not so much that it's that, that bothers us. It's that we go like, that's the one you picked. Right. That's the straight white male, the right. suckiest of all of us. Yep. I could have given you a thousand names better. That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh. So like, I'll see something like that and I'll graze over it just and sure enough, I'm like, ooh, go, fuck, 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 that's horrible. And I watch three minutes of it. And then the next day I'll work with, you know, a kill Tony regular, a fucking, you it's know, like you're better than that. So much better. Like a Hans Kim out there just fucking with a brand new joke. And I'm like that brand new joke. And I'll yeah. ask, I'll talk to him afterwards and I'll go, that's a new joke. Oh yeah. I just wrote it on the way here today. And literally it's better than uh, how is it possible that a joke that he wrote in his car on the it's way to the venue is better than any of the jokes that I saw. That a TV comedian prepared. Yeah. yeah. 
What are we talking about? That's the time we live in. <laughs> it is unfucking believable. Yeah. If you and think then, about yeah, it too hard, you go YouTube. crazy. And again, that's why I'm loving Texas, man, because I'm not fucking dwelling on this right, shit. Right, right. When you're in LA, you're surrounded by these billboards and your friends and, and so the should I be doing that? People. Uh, oh. oh, there's my old agent. Oh, there's a manager. It's all this showbiz shit. And instead now I'm golfing, literally just thinking about the jokes. I've had to do this where my friends on, on Instagram, I'll just mute them. Because I like them a lot, yeah. And, but Instagram has become like a, a place to brag. Oh yeah. And I don't. I've made choices <laughs> in my life to like l- l- minimize my fame on purpose. Yeah. You know, to be like, I got a good life. I don't want that. Right. I don't want to be online all the time filming myself. Right. It's not the life I want. Same. And the result of that means I play smaller rooms than yep. some other people. Doesn't mean I'm not happy for them doing it. But right. When I see it constantly, I look at this massive thing. I'm like, hey, dude, you're making me upset. Instead right. of like, I know what I did. Yeah. Obviously, I'm giving up that. I don't want to see it in my face all the time. So right. keep celebrating mute. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I don't need to walk out on stage and shoot a t-shirt cannon. <laughs> I don't need confetti. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's fun there's levels to this but man am i with you like i am so just fucking content for the bragging shit on instagram is so it's always been weird to me there's a part of me that thinks that i would have done better in like the 80s or the 90s you know because it's like i I just don't like it and other people are like well dude you better learn to love it because that's the business i'm like "Uh -uh. watch me and you're like i don't like your life yeah and so the one thing too, I see this, like I've always been bothered by it was, and it started with like, I like to say the evolution of this, like public uh, grieving, grieving for other people's sake instead of your own. Mm-hmm. It started with um, yeah. the, 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 the posts on Facebook. It's like, I have the best wife. Uh, we're 10 year anniversary. She's lovely. And I'm like, this is, you send this to her. Why are you right. involving us in this? Or then like, my dad's been gone 10 years. I miss you, dad. Like, why is this a post? Yeah. Rest in peace, Betty White. One of the legends, like, is she seeing that? Yeah, I know you're out there. Like, what are you, you're out there? Not even like she was a great, like you, like you're speaking directly to this lady you've never met. And it's like, bleh. Right. It's so gross. Yeah. That's it, why I want to hold a mirror up to them all the time. And it's like, you guys fucking suck. And that's what it is on stage too. We're like, yep. you're filming your whole life. Right. And, and pretending it's this thing. It's like, you're like a travel uh, influencer. Yep. And you're like, that's not real. You're not this happy all the time. Yep. I knew a lady who was, are gonna get married to this travel blogger. She's a big traveler too, my friend Evelina. And uh, and I was like, what happened? You broke up? Why? She goes, if he, like, she goes, I thought he was happy all the time. She goes, he kind of sucked. I'm like, uh, she goes, if his real life was as happy as his online life, we would have stayed together. Right. It was, a, it was a, she would he, be posing in front of a canyon, smiling, and as soon as the picture was taken, he'd just go back to right. frowning and be like, fucking Mr. Bus. Oh my God. And I'm like, well, where's that? You're yep. faking it. You're big yep. phonies. Yep. Oh, I'm a huge so and so for who was it? What's his name again that died? Okay, cool. I'll get it on that unbelievable the virtue signaling i just don't <sighs> i'm so bro- torn up over it everyone in the world uh, yeah oh i feel so bad about this i'm 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 a good person i'm a good person I, care. I feel bad look look at the words that i wrote i care and they nauseate the rest of us yep and they want us to live in this one world where we're all mm-hmm. exactly the same but that doesn't the people who think that's fine and the people who think that they're nauseated by it they're like you're disgusting right we're just never gonna see eye to eye. Yeah. So we're like, blech. Yeah. And comedians, what we'll do is we'll make fun of you if you're another comedian, do it behind your back. And then when we see you, we can be like, how you doing? Yeah. I got it out of my system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's how we handle yeah. things. <laughs> and then a few just go public with their gripes. <laughs> it's like, keep it to yourself. Just talk shit. God, I know. I don't even do it anymore, man. I don't do jokes on Twitter. I don't do Not fucking anything. I don't. I mean, it's. I've been off Facebook for years. It all sucks. It sucks. I mean, it's too bad. It used to be fucking cool. It could have been cool. Yeah, it really could have been. Shit got weird. I remember a time when I used Twitter really well. It was a Sunset Strip music festival. Remember that? Yeah. And they shut down Sunset Strip. And it was near my old place. We could walk there in 10 minutes. So, you know, we got tickets for whatever. One time we we, we did, um, volunteered for a little bit through the comedy store. Got a booth. Yeah. Anyway, then we were all wandering around. And I'm in the cat club. And I see this band called Nico Vega. Mm-hmm. And they were like killing right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. And we hadn't heard of them. 
and I just tweeted because I knew Yusuf was there. I knew a few other people were around the Sunset Fest, and I was like, I'm in the clack hub watching this great band, Nico Vega. And then, you know, you had, that's when you had like 20 friends on there. And then they were all like, oh, Ari's in the club. Let's go. And they all showed up. It's like, yeah. sweet. That's my way to get out to them. Yeah. And that's when it was like still a great, right. fun place. Right. Now, if you did that, someone else would send an article like, yeah, but did you know at Nico Vega, what is at these accusations against him? <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck, dude? I'm listening <laughs> to music here. Oh, dude. She, they were so hardcore badass. This female singer would come out barefoot and just fucking. Rage. I feel like I know that name. I'll play you a song. I'll play. I'll go out with a with a song by Nico Vega, but it was like they were just. Is she bad from at, Austin. The Nico, Nico Vega was the name of the band. She had a, a a name of a band name, but oh, you can't. I'll look her up. You don't have your phone. Oh yeah, I don't have my I'm phone. I'm using it to record. Nico Vega. I had a shirt. I left it in fucking Ecuador. Ecuador. Yeah. Oh. A great shirt I bought there. You can oh. think it was an American indie rock band formed in 2005, right around that. They were brand new. Damn. In LA, California. Oh, wow. Lead vocalist, Aha Volkman. Yeah. Yep. Damn. I'll play you a song. Uh, all right. Yep. Thanks, I, dude. Yeah, this was so much fun. When was the last time you were on the podcast? Uh, I don't know. Can't be the great cleanup. It'll be a Shroomfest one. Mm, no, it's been a while, but I did. Uh, I did do the uh, the uh, the the time vault one with you. It's not out yet. Won't right. be out for years. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be an interesting one. You got the ex- exclusive first interview about the cancellation and what it's like. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, no, this is fun. Yeah. You're my big brother, and and uh, in the wild world, the wild, weird world of how I like to live, you're a really big deal to me, and Shared I appreciate you, and you're a misunderstood hero amongst, uh, <laughs> again, people that uh, like this type of weird life. Of, of they were, uh, we were, Joe List was doing these like uh, icebreakers that he found a <clears throat> list of, like questions to ask each other mm-hmm. um, on speed date or whatever, just like, um, interesting questions of like, oh, that's good. let me think. What would I rather be? You know, and one of them was like, what do you wish people knew about you more? Um, Not that they don't know it all, but you wish they knew it more. Mine is, I'm actually a nice person. Yeah, <laughs> I, just like I think that's deal. mine too. Yeah, yeah, and I think because we have an outlet for our healism. Um, it makes us better people. I watched you give a homeless guy a bunch of meat earlier. I, uh, you know, I. Those comics would f- have filmed that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Had some extra meat, figured I'd do this. Hey, can you say thank you for the camera? Do it again, do it again, please. Oh, we didn't get that, the light wasn't right. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> these fucking animals out here. Unbelievable. Yeah, there's that song, Shane pointed it out, and I'm like, oh damn, it carries on a lot. I think it's Frankie Valley. Uh, oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. Right. Doom, 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 yeah. and that's all it is. Like, oh, please don't get it wrong. Right. And when you see Chappelle don't and all this shit, it's like, please mis- don't let me be misunderstood. Bum, You're bum, misunderstanding me. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. I feel so confused. Yeah. What are the lyrics? Yeah. You ever go back and listen to lyrics of that and be like, oh, they were deep. Yeah. Please don't let. The best version of that is from a band called uh, Los Esmeralda, something like that. It was a cover for uh, Kill Bill. Oh, really? Yeah. Baby, do you understand me now? Sometimes I feel a little mad. Well, you don't know that no one alive can always be an angel. Right. When things go wrong, I seem to be bad. Mm -hmm. Because I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh, Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. Wow. If I seem edgy, I want, <laughs> if I seem edgy, I want you to know that I never mean to take it out on you. Life has its problems and I got my share. And that's one thing I never mean to do because I love you. Baby, don't you know I'm a human? I've got thoughts like any other man. Sometimes I find myself alone and regretting some foolish thing, some little simple thing I've done, some mm. little simple thing I've done. It's incredible. 
But I'm just a soul. His intentions are good. Oh, this Lord. This seems like a poem that you wrote after like the Kobe stuff. <laughs> yeah, I did it in three minutes. Everyone's like, well, how is Kobe stuff? I'm like, guys, you're putting way more emphasis on this than I was. Right. <laughs> it's, right. it's the 30th in a, in a series of, of 40. Yeah. I, I thought about it for seven minutes tops. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, quick, quick, get it 100%. up. 100%. Um, it's incredible. Maybe sometimes it's hard to, it's, sometimes I'm so carefree with a joy that's hard to hide. And sometimes it seems that all I have to do is worry. And then you're bound to see my other side. If We're I not even going to shoot guns today. Yeah. I have to get you to the airport. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's five. Yep. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to go pee. Go watch Kill Tony on uh, YouTube right now. I'll put a pop-up link to it if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening, seek out Kill Tony on Spotify or just YouTube. And come visit us. Come see a live show in <laughs> Austin, <laughs> Texas. If you dare, motherfucker. Come out. The greatest game of all. Humans. <laughs> It is. It is in today's day and age. There's no nuance. <laughs> so anyway, you guys, uh, that's the episode. Thank you very much. Tony Hinchcliffe, you're about to get that skeptic tank bump. And Joe Rogan, who has a podcast of his own. I forgot to say in the intro. I'm so sorry. Um, you'll get half a bump, but you will still get a skeptic tank bump. The Joe Rogan Experience Podcast. It's on YouTube. Check it out now. Check out the last week's episode. I think you'll see downloads on YouTube of in the hundreds of thousands. That's why... You're friends with Ari Shafir because you're about to get that Ari Shafir bump, Rogan. Check him out on Spotify. I bet you'll see the rankings right now. Vaulted to the top because of that Ari Shafir bump. Um, so that's the episode. Don't forget, tickets, AriShafir.com for New York City, February 8th at the Gramercy, where I might do my next special if the shows go well. Um, Salt Lake City, March 6th, third show added. The other two sold out long ago. Uh, me, Norman, O'Neill, and Ren Azizi. You're going to be happy with that Gramercy show. It's a storytelling show. It's Ari Shafir's renamed storytelling show. It's the first one we've done in years, and it's going to be fun. Um, Grand Rapids and Detroit with me, Bobby Kelly, and Big J Operson. Operson, that's right. Um, whoever is named Big J Operson is about to get that Ari Shafir bump. March 25th, 26th, get tickets at rishafir.com. And then Phoenix in January, Tampa and Denver in February, and Vancouver, February 27th um, at the JFL Festival. So, shall we start? Or say we do? Oh, we, we're done, I mean. Um, yeah, thanks, dude. The, the shows of the Vulcan were fun. Actually, I tanked a fucking dick off on, my, on that second show. I mean, I ate a dick on that second show, on that Tuesday night show. Monday was okay. Tuesday was fucking suck ass. God damn, I fucking... Just no connection at all with the crowd. None. Just went through my material and just like ate like a four and a half. Just right to the gut. Could feel it not going well. Kickstarted it for a little bit. And then I went like longer to try to get them back. Awful. Just awful. Um, anyway, I think that's it. Don't forget to sign up for my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. Adrian Appalucci is on this week and she'll be on lots of weeks. Um... Shooting this shit. So we do those four different podcasts. I think uh, Arrested, Develop Arrested Development, um, Dear Ari, General Mailbag, and I've still got to name the, the travel episodes. And then Shooting the Shit is just when we don't get to a topic. That was episode one. Um, all right. That's it, right? Guys, I'm about to get to 100,000 subscribers, and I'm pissed about it because I got to give 100 and 100 dollars. Fucking fuck. 200 bucks per week to these fucking bitches. God damn it. I mean, they're good employees, Marissa and Kyla, but ah, I made a mistake saying I'd give them a raise when I get to 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And here we are at like 98,000, so it's probably going to happen this week. So I'm telling you guys, there's a subscribe button, where would it be? Like right here underneath the screen, like right around there, I think. Please do not hit that. That's going to cost me a lot of money. I mean, thousands of dollars, 52 weeks times 100, is that 5,000? Damn it. $10,000 a year? Oh, I think I fucked up. Yeah, do not hit subscribe.
please do me a favor. Do not hit subscribe. If you're on Spotify listening, hit subscribe. That won't cost me anything. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or Stitcher or Laughable, go ahead and hit subscribe. But if you're on YouTube, actually move it off this. Just get get it out of that range and just don't hit subscribe. Why bother? Uh, all right, you guys. Until next week, I'm Ari Shafir. This has been – wait. This has been Ari Shafir, Skeptic Think, episode 455, the most Texas podcast of all time. For Tony Hinchcliffe, Skeptic Think, boom, and Joe Rogan, Skeptic Think, boom, I'm Ari Shafir. I'm saying so long. I'll see you on the road.